Harold's Barbecue out of Corning, Arkansas. Proud sponsors of the Corning Bobcats. The best barbecue in town by stoplight. Stop by and say hi to the crazy pit master, Lyndon Massey. Carry out, dine in, catering. Come hungry, leave happy. Harold's Barbecue. A big thanks to Goodman Drug Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Kathy Goodman and staff would like to invite you to drop by for any of your pharmaceutical needs and or Razorback and Bobcat apparel. Drop by and see them Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.30, and Saturday, 9 to 1, or use the convenient drive-thru. Goodman Drug Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Red Taylor Ford, locally owned and operated by the Taylor family since 1977. Their company has been an integral part of the Corning community since their beginning, participating and or donating to basically every major community project to come before them. They have a top-notch service department, with master certified technicians. Contact them for all of your automotive needs at 870-857-3516 or at www.redtailorford.com. This is Mike Vincent, certified public accountant. I've been a Bobcat fan for as long as I can remember, having worn the black and gold as a student years ago. Join me in supporting our students as they proudly represent our school and community. And come see me on 2nd Street in downtown Corning for all your tax and accounting needs. Go Bobcats! CSR would like to thank Parkview Restaurant of Corning, Arkansas for their sponsorship. Parkview offers breakfast, lunch, and supper, including daily plate lunches. And they have a daily with a variety of lunch meats and nightly specials. Amy and Danny and Jordan are big supporters of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Thank you to Parkview Restaurant. A special thanks to Richardson Family Dentistry out of Corning, Arkansas. Locally owned, locally operated, a fine dental office with a great staff that are all proud sponsors of the Corning Bobcat Athletics Program. Richardson Family Dentistry. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance Company introducing Ag Promise, an exceptional policy that protects everything farmers rely on. Ag Promise is a competitively priced, easy to understand, and tailored to meet your specific needs. That's Farm Bureau's commitment to you, and they have a team of local agents and adjusters ready to back it up. Give them a call today to protect your agri business. It's not complicated, it's a promise. Ag Promise. 870 857 6788. Hey, all you Bobcats, this is Ty Price of Price Farms, and I want to challenge everyone to attend at least five football games this year. Let's show our boys that we believe in them. Remember, once a bobcat, always a bobcat. A special thanks to Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation on their sponsorship. Whether it's grain bins, wells, pumps, underground pipe, or any service of that nature, Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation will take care of you. Rhonda and Jerry Solace would like to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. First Choice Healthcare in Corning, Arkansas, proud sponsors of Corning Bobcat Athletics, celebrating 25 years of community health care. At First Choice Healthcare, we practice compassionate, affordable health care for everyone to help improve lives and build healthier communities. First Choice Healthcare, your community, your health. CSR would like to give a special thanks to B&B Well Drilling out of Peach Orchard, Arkansas, for their continued support of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Brian and Lisa Bass are proud, proud graduates of Corning High School, and they invite you to call them for any of your well drilling needs. 870-215-3808, B&B Well Drilling. A big thanks to Clay County Electric Co-op out of Corning, Arkansas for their sponsorship. CCE is an electric utility company in Clay County with dedicated workers and a friendly staff and have always been proud supporters of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Clay County Electric Co-op, 3111 U.S. 67 Corning, Arkansas, 870-857-3521. A special thanks to Woolard Flying Service out of Corning, Arkansas for supporting Bobcat Athletics. Matt Woolard would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck this season and also remind them that the sky is the limit. Woolard Flying Service, 870-857-3839. A special thanks to Civil Engineering Associates for being proud sponsors of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Two locations, one in Jonesboro, one in Poplar Bluff. Professional engineer John Selig of CEA would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Keith and Rhonda Turner of K-Ron Farms would like to encourage the community to support the students of the Corning School District. 
Whether it is a sporting event or an academic accomplishment, these students are representing our school. We need to let them know how proud we are of them. Let's show our Bobcat pride. It's great to be a Bobcat. k -Ron Farms. Looking for a good and reliable used car? Stop by and see the father-son combination of Mark and Kyle Williams at Mark's Car ER Auto Sales. Proud sponsor of the Corning Bobcats, locally owned and operated, 870-565-5046. Wiedemann Farms, 561 County Road 131 in Corning, Arkansas. Wiedemann Farms has been serving the Corning community since 1978. Larry and Mary Wiedemann are proud, proud supporters of not only the city of Corning, but of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Wiedemann Farms, go Cats. The Corning Sports Report would like to give a special shout out to Bosch Licker Brothers Farms for sponsoring our endeavor. The Bosch Lickers have always been avid Bobcats and avid supporter of all things Corning Athletics. Thank you again, Bowshucker Brothers Farms. First National Bank takes the banking experience and customizes it to fit you. Whether it's supporting your Corning Bobcats or saving you time by eliminating trips to the bank, First National Bank puts you first, always. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender, First National Bank. Corning Sports Report wants to give a special shout out to Jeremy and Amanda Wiedemann out of Corning, Arkansas. Extremely kind-hearted people who not only support the community, but they also support the Corning Bobcat Athletics. Jeremy and Amanda Wiedemann. The Corning Sports Report would like to give a special shout-out to State Representative Joe Jett for sponsoring our endeavor. Mr. Joe Jett has always been active in the community, whether it's supporting the town of Corning or supporting Bobcat Athletics. This is a political ad paid for by State Representative Mr. Joe Jett. Corning Sports Report would like to give a shout-out to Watson Oil Company for their continued support of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Locally owned, locally operated. Kelly and Chad Watson would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Watson Oil Company, 406 Southeast 1st Street, Corning, Arkansas, 870-857-0006. Most of us are more comfortable doing important business with people we know and trust. You've been running into shelter insurance agent Kirk Scobie in Corning at church, at the grocery store, and the county fair for more than 25 years now. If personal service, trust, and easy access to your insurance agent are important to you, give Kirk Scobie or his team a call. Contact Kirk Scobie and ask about a free personal protection review for your auto, home, or life insurance today. From all the guys here at CSR, we'd like to give a special thanks to Mike Townsend. Mike Townsend is the owner and operator of Mike Townsend Farms LLC out of Corning, Arkansas. Whether it's grain, lime, hay, byproducts, gravel and litter, Mike Townsend Farms covers it all. Again, thank you to Mike Townsend Farms LLC. Corning Sports Report would like to give a shout out to Rockwell Farms out of Peach Orchard, Arkansas. Logan and Karen Rockwell have been avid supporters of not only the city of Corning, but of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Logan and Karen would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Rockwell Farms. CSR would like to give a special shout out to Heritage Ag out of Hoxie, Arkansas. Serving Arkansas farmers since 1966, leading the farm equipment industry into the 21st century. Call Brody Morrow, salesman at 870-886-6663 or 870-809-1822, Heritage Agriculture of Arkansas. When you need to find a farm at a price that's right, that red and blue sign is just within sight. Roll in, roll in to Conquest and roll on. Midwest Auto Parts, longtime proud supporters of the Corning Bobcats. Locally owned by the George family and serving your community since 1946. Midwest Auto Parts. Roll in, roll in to Conquest and roll on.
Hoxie, Arkansas, on the campus of, of Hoxie High School, home of the Mustangs, for a 3-3A conference showdown. For kickoff, Rocky Flores with the onside kicker off the bat, and the Hoxie Mustangs recover live for some 3A3 conference showdown high school football Friday night lights in the state of Arkansas on the campus of Hoxie High School. Joining me, Andy Earl, is your host and play-by-play -play commentator, is my classmate of the great class of 2006. More importantly, a good friend of mine, Mr. Jared J. Rod Grady. Andy, it's a great honor to sit beside you. Ah, it's an honor to have you here, my man. On this chilly, chilly, chilly night. I love the weather. Got me some shorts on and a short sleeve. I am ready to row. Hoxie offense will take over right around midfield, the 49. And Bob will snap, high snap. And now the quarterback's going to take it to the far side. He's got all kinds of room, though. He's got speed. He's got some blockers. In fact, he may take it all the way. One guy to beat. He outruns him. Good hustle by number 45 in white. But I tell you what, speed kills. You either have it or you're chasing it. Yeah, and that was even a busted play. It was a high snap, bobbled it, still was able to get to the outside and take it 55 yards for a touchdown. That's not kind of how you want to see Corning start off the game. I think that's just how Coach Sears drew it up. I imagine that's how he did. <laughs> Before we could even get it out of our mouth, Hoxie came into the game 3-2, and 0-2 oh in conference as they're about to try for the extra point attempt here. And their offense is averaging 37 points a game. They've already got six right now going for the extra point here. See if the Bobcats get a little pressure up front there. Maybe get a hand up and get a hand on it. They get a little pressure, but not quite good enough. The field goal is going to be good. Extra point, tack on a point for Hoxie, the home team. It is homecoming night here for Hoxie. Not much time off the clock, 11.48 to go. Matter of fact, people are just now getting set down, and there's fireworks going off already. <laughs> yeah. Andy, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the not the place kicker, but the holder there. That was amazing. He caught a rolling football and then was able to get that down for the kicker to get that off for an extra point. I'm amazed by that. Well, I tell you what, it's the little things. And I'm so glad you said that because, you know, I, I can't always catch everything up here. I've got all these different stats in front of me and stuff like that. So I'm glad someone did, and, and that's a good point. It's the little things like that that we talk about. And uh, we'll talk about a few more of those things too, by the way. Hoxie's going to kick off. Obviously, in high school, he kicked off from the 40. Interesting choice. He's going to kick it from the far hash. Haven't seen this this year. Usually it's right in the middle of the field. Again, homecoming night here in Lawrence County, the Mustangs homecoming. Uh, their ceremonies are now over. We apologize that we got to you late. We got to you right before kickoff, and uh, we won't go into why. Had a little issues and uh, something that was out of our control, and I, I don't even want to – I'm already stirred up from it, so I'm going to leave it be. I'm going to give you a shoulder massage here, Thank you, sir. To, Thank to you. stay calm. Speaking of massage, we're about to get to that. End over end kick. Back is Bo Young. He catches it about the 15. They're going to do a reverse. They fake it to Amaker. Bo Young still has it. He's got a blocker. That's Crosby. He's got room. He's going to finally be brought out. He give a, I tell you, he gave a little punishment there. He might have taken somebody to give some there. I like that. I like that little attitude. Give a little punch back to these Hoxie Mustangs. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Speaking of massages, we've got Debbie Hill Rose that's given us a free 60-minute massage and Amy Jordan of Parkview Restaurant that has also given us a $50 gift card. It is trivia night here with CSR. After this first play, we'll talk a little bit about what the trivia question is. You'll have an opportunity to win it by commenting in the comment section on YouTube uh, or on Facebook of our live stream. First down and 10 for the Bobcats. They take over low snap, handoff. They're going to reverse back to the quarterback. He's got throwing. Oh, he's over his head there. So say he's got comps like out there in the flats, but he threw it over his head. He took a shot. Smith did it in the backfield. little double reverse with a pitch back, almost a flea flicker. They're pulling out all the stops here. Boy, there, there was a lot going on in that play. I honestly think if he would have just kept it, they had the edge out there on that wrong, on that right side. Not the wrong side, but the right <laughs> side. Uh, but, you know, that play ended up developing how it did and kind of was all over the place. Hey, it is what it is now. You obviously can't uh, do anything differently about it now. So it's going to be second down and 10 for the Bobcats. They're going to have it at about their 34-yard line. We apologize. We've got a low view here. 34-yard line, handoff, Comstock up middle. He's got a little bit of a seam. He's going to be brought down by a slew. No, he's not. He's still up, and finally they bring him down. It took about three or four of them there to do that, though. And it's going to bring up third down and about eight for the Bobcats with 11-18 to go. Clock is ticking as the Bobcats huddle up. And, folks, we uh, like we said, tonight is going to be trivia night. Excuse me. Here's our first question, our first trivia question. This is for the first half, Okay. How many football games have been played total in the Corning-Pigot football rivalry? 
how many football games have been played total in the Corning Piggott football rivalry. Hand off. And it's Gutierrez. He's got room. He cuts it out. Cuts it back in. He's got a first down. Move the chains for the black and gold. Gutierrez did a good job of being patient and then hitting the hole, hitting that next gear when he needed to. 72, I believe. Colin Wilson was way out there. Good job, Colin. I'm glad you saw that. I was going to brag on Dakota Wilkins. He was also in the uh, the linebackers. He pretty much bench pressed one to the ground there. <laughs> That's awesome. First down 10 Bobcats, 1040 to go here. If you just join us, this is Corning Sports Report's live coverage of Corning High Bobcat football. Bobcats take over at the 47-yard line, their own 47. Get four split out. The two in the slots going to be Dylan Lane and Clayton Crosby. And there's the snap. Throw to Crosby, catches it, got a blocker, Bo Young, good job. Good second effort by Crosby. That could be a late hit here. He had him wrapped up out of bounds, and he threw him down. They're not going to say that, though. Good job by Crosby, and also Bo Young blocking out there on the near side. Great hands by Crosby. It wasn't the best pass. Uh, he had to kind of catch it a little bit low and a little bit behind him, but he caught it, kept his composure, and then drove his feet upfield. And good blocking there for the wide receivers. Yep. Morning. Bo Young. 5'8", 190s, Clayton Crosby. Listen to this, 280-pound bench press. Are you kidding me? Holy hay bales. That's awesome. Handoff. Comstock up the middle. Does he have enough for the first down? It's going to be awful close. Depends on which sideline judge gets to uh, spot it here. The near one will, and I think the far one had a better spot. We'll see where we stand. They got the digital uh, down marker over there. I don't know if our cameras can see that. They can. You see the digital down marker. That's some high-tech stuff right there. You know, I'm glad that you uh, that I see Gary Comstock out there. I kind of think of – him and uh, um, Jake Gutierrez is a little bit of lightning, a little bit of thunder. Jake Gutierrez bringing the thunder. He kind of dances around and can be a heavy hitter. And Comstock, man, he can blows through those holes. He's that lightning. I like it. Thunder and lightning. Love it. Hand up. Gutierrez, he somehow gets around the defender. He's still going. Good gain there on the ground. And this is a good time to bring this up. Last week, just last week, this defense of Hoxie gave up 600. Let me say it again. 600 yards of offense to Newport. There were three Greyhounds that rushed for over 100 yards last week. What do you think we're going to do this week? <laughs> well, we better we better be running that ball, and it looks like we're doing a pretty effective job of it. Jake Gutierrez, man, he's just got that sneaky speed. There he is again, and money cuts really well. They sniffed it out this time. The Hoxie defenders did, and it looks like that was number 30, River Whaley. He power cleans 280, a senior 6'2", 190 there on the defensive end for Hoxie. And speaking of Hoxie's size, listen to this, folks. 45 players on their roster, 19, count it, 19 players over 200 pounds. What's in the water around here is all I can say. And listen, we'll talk a little bit about their offense and their skill position, too, here in a minute, too. So it, it's kind of thunder and lightning as well. Quick pass, Bo Young, Clayton Crosby blocking. That has worked so far. It's been effective. They gained another three, maybe four yards there with that play. Again, that is working so far. I say if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but it brings up a huge fourth down. You had to say huge in a game like this, but listen, high-powered offense like them that's scoring 37 a game, you feel like you need to get it every time. Uh, you get every possession you have, you just about need to score. Every time Corning gets punched, they got to punch back. I like it. I like it a lot. Fourth down and two here. Jared, what are we doing? Running the ball. I like it. Gutierrez somehow gets through there. Enough for the first down. Listen to the crowd here on the visitor's bench in Lawrence County. Little bit of lightning <laughs> and a little bit of thunder from Jake Gutierrez. Boom, boom, boom as he's bouncing <laughs> off guys. Yeah, they're, as they're bouncing uh, off him. Yeah, that's not the fireworks, folk, here. They do have fireworks tonight for homecoming. You like that? By the way, speaking of, Renee Wilkins, thank you. Thanks to her, we're going to have fireworks next week at homecoming in Corning. They're spreading them out four wide so far every time. Quick pass again. Crosby, good block by Bo Young. Crosby somehow makes a move and they're going to throw a flag on Bo Young. I are they going to say a block in the back there? If you can see, if you can read the front of their jersey, it's not a block in the back. What did you think there, Jared? Was that a block in the back to you? I mean, Well, to be honest with you, I was trying to look up field to see who all he was going to juke again, but I, I didn't quite <laughs> see. Wasn't looking at the block there. Holding. Holding. Okay, okay. That's a little different. Then. Okay. That maybe I, maybe we can understand. Either way, it's a, it's a homecoming of sorts. For Mr. Gunnar Cook, our assistant coach, he was at Hoxie last year. He's on the near sideline here. And uh, he's everyone's dressed warm tonight. I don't know what the problem is. This feels good. I got the shorts on and short sleeve. I love it. Well, you're just crazy, Andy. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit crazy. A little loco. That's going to bring up a first down. And are you ready for the same lot? Forever. Forever. First down in about 20. Actually, is it a spot foul? It looks like about 21. It should be 20, but it's about 21, 22 yards to go here. 
They're going to go to the air, and I don't blame them. They're going deep. Bo Young inside, and it's intercepted. Pass was thrown to the inside, not the back shoulder, I think, like Bo Young was hoping. And that, uh, that pass was picked off, and I believe – that was number one. That's Ethan Blocker. Listen, this guy was the Corning killer last year. He had a t- 124 yards receiving for three touchdowns against Corning last year. And I tell you what, he's the point guard in basketball, and he did a good job there of uh, finding the basket or the football, I should say, and, uh, and getting it. Hey, also, Coach wanted to mention that he makes a lot of catches in traffic right there. He didn't really have a traffic to worry about there, but he did a good job of, of ball hawking. Yeah, yeah, he followed it all the way and it kept his arms underneath it to make sure he completed that catch. First down and 10 for Hoxie. Shotgun formation. Powell to the far side. He breaks a tackle. There's going to be a flag. And he's got all kinds of room there. Finally brought down by number 45, the sophomore, Parker Davis. Flag is back near the line of scrimmage in the interior line. You assume that's going to be holding. We would sure take it. I promise you that. Will you hold that drop on the air just a little bit? Let's see what uh, we have here. Still no uh, sign from the white hat. Finally, we get a holding call on Hoxie, and we'll sure take it. Absolutely, we'll take it. That quarterback, by the way, for Hoxie is Dalen Powell. He is on the Bubba Noakes 42 Sports 3A Player of the Year watch list. He was the player of the week last week against Newport, had an 85-yard touchdown. He came in in the third series due to disciplinary reasons. He missed the first two, but that first series he came in, kaboom, went dynamite and uh, went for a, a long, long touchdown. And, uh, he's got some brothers on this team that are very good, too. We'll get to them here in just a second. First down and 20, 7.41 to go here in the opening quarter. The Bobcats trail 7 to nothing. Man in motion, that's Blocker, the, uh, the corning killer from last year. They're going to go to him. He's got blockers out there. He's got some room. He's going to cut it back up. Uses his blocker, makes another guy miss. Finally going to be brought down by number five, Braden, or Bryden Hewitt, I should say. And I tell you what, you know, for the first time since week one, the corning Bobcats are fully – Healthy. Wow. That's not what a lot of teams can say at this time of the year. Uh, you know, Clay Smith did a really good job there of keeping his defender on his inside, keeping contained to the outside, uh, making him cut it up in the middle where his teammates are there to help him. Yeah, I tell you what, that was a, a great job. And I tell you, we got Comstock coming off the field gingerly here. Do we have a timeout? I believe we do. It's going to be by the Bobcats. Is Comstock okay? He is down on the ground right now in pain. I did not see what happened uh, on that play. While we've got an opportunity, though, we do want to mention White Barn Creations in Corning, Arkansas. Owner Christy D. would love to have you drop by and check out their plethora of different items such as homemade bath bombs, candles, shampoo for dogs, laundry detergent, all-purpose cleaner, lingerie. What else do they got? Farmhouse decor, baby gifts, and beautiful, beautiful custom paintings on canvas and wood and much, much more. There's even a flea market on the other side of Christy's building that she rents out, and you just never, ever know what you're going to find there. 1203 West Main Street, Corning, Arkansas, or check them out on Facebook. Say it every week, my dad's Old Man River. If he has Facebook, you can too. White Barn Creations, Corning, Arkansas. Christy D's the owner there. Shop local if you can. Andy, I believe uh, Comstock, on his, on his first run or maybe his second run, wherever they converted that first down here about midfield, uh, he was slow to get up from that play. So it might be something lingering from, from previous uh, the previous drive. Well, I can tell you this, good pickup, but I can tell you this, you, you can't afford to lose a guy like Gary Comstock uh, in, in this game right here, I promise you. A guy that triple jumped 38 feet, 6'2", 185, runs a 4'7", 40. They're going deep. Powell's going deep. He's got a man. Is he overthrowing him? He dived into the temp, and he just missed it. Great effort by the wide receiver. We're going to try to get a number out there. He's turned sideways. I can't quite see it here. Fantastic effort by the wide receiver there. As we're looking on our screen, it looks like number 18, and that is going to be River Brewer. And this kid can leap. He high-pointed one last week, extremely athletic, 4'6", runs a lot of stop-and-go routes. Uh, he's also their field goal kicker. Listen, that's five interceptions last year for that kid. He's an athlete now. Yeah, sounds like he knows how to get up and get the football. Yes, sir. Like you said, high point it, rebound it like a basketball. Get up, get up, and get down. Third down and eight here for Hoxie. Handoff up the middle. Oh, no, the quarterback keeps it. He faked all of us. I think he's got a first down and more. It's going to be a foot race. Amaker is going to run him down. He does. The fastest Bobcat. Thank goodness he runs a 4-5-40, just a little faster than Powell, the quarterback. Good angle, too, by number one. Absolutely, man. I, you know, you hope that you take him down a lot sooner than that, but it didn't look like we even touched him until Cody got to him. He's just blowing by some yeah. of our guys. Yeah, he really, really is. We're not containing the edge at all, but it's so tough when they're, when they're showing you that read option up the middle, and you got to respect that. You really do because the other kid, the other pal, number seven, I mean, that kid had a 95-yard touchdown against Westside. He's also on the 3A sports uh, watch list for player of the year. So, 
it's a dynamite duo there. It really, really is. Man in motion. They're going to the opposite side of the wide receiver. Bubble screen, and he's going to break a tackle. That was a big miss there. It looks like, oh, he's going to be in for a uh, touchdown. Hoxie. It looks like number five there, Brighton Hewitt, gave it a go. Had a good angle. Dove at him just couldn't quite get there. 13 to nothing. Hoxie was 6.23 to go, and there goes the fireworks. Hoxie, uh, wide receiver, did a good job of uh, coming back to the middle of the field to catch that ball, to plant both feet, and then just kind of give a little juke to the to the Bobcat defender, and he just went ole. Ole, 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 ole. A little soccer term there. And it's going to be Ethan Blocker is going to be the holder, and I believe that's going to be number 18, River Brewer, the senior, 5'11", 168. He made the first field goal earlier, and it looked awful smooth. Again, 13 nothing here if you're just joining us. 6.23 to go in the opening quarter on homecoming for Hoxie. Good kick, end over end, and that's that's a good-looking kicker right there. We've seen Harrisburg had a good one too. That's probably the next best we've seen so far this year. Well, we've got an opportunity, though. Again, 14 nothing here, the Hoxie Mustangs, the home team. Pug Life Chronicles out of New York City, New York. Young man named George Zayas. He's a Yankee and a Yankee fan, unfortunately, but that's okay. We won't hold that against him. Nobody's perfect. Live streaming company, they do kind of the same stuff we do here, except they do a little bit different sports. They do boxing. They do basketball, baseball. They do charity events, and they're all around the world. They are worldwide, prestige worldwide, global. And that's, again, Pug Live Chronicles. Check them out on YouTube or Facebook. George Zayez, that staff, does a tremendous job over there. Sharpest dressed man in all of live streaming. And he's a good, good help to us, and we sure do appreciate him. Guys, can we check in on social media here and see if anybody's answered that question? Again, this is trivia night for the first half. The first trivia question is going to be, how many football games have been played total in the corning Pigot football rivalry? Again, how many football games total have been played in the corning Pigot, the Rice Bowl, if you will, football rival. We didn't really call it. We didn't have a name or a trophy for it back then. Of course, you didn't really need that. You didn't need a pep talk that week either. Nope. Not the picket week. As the Hoxie Mustangs are going to kick off in the far hash at the 40-yard line. A little bit of wind here tonight. Bobcats will be taking the ball from the right side of your screen to the left side of your screen. Bo Young and Dakota Amaker back to return. End over end kick. Bo Young does a great job. He's a center fielder in baseball. Does a great job of getting that ball. He makes one guy miss. He's going up the field, and on the far side, he's got it to about the 25-yard line. And this is a turf field over here in Hoxie. You had a lot of rain this morning, but obviously those little rubber pellets or, or balls or whatever they're called do a good job of obviously soaking that up. So there shouldn't be any issues tonight with footing. Andy, in your experience as a player, I know that we didn't play too many teams that had turf fields, but I think you went to one, some some football camps. And so do you have much experience on the turf? I do. I, I had one. I'm going to tell you something. When you get tackled on that, it hurts and it burns, and you've got almost carpet burn after a while. And it's really weird. It has a different give to it. It's, it's tougher. I think there's going to be more ankle injuries on something like this, in my opinion. Up the middle there, and I believe, was that? I couldn't tell. Was that Gutierrez? Couldn't tell who. I think it was Gutierrez up the middle there. Again, the Bobcats are fully healthy for the first time since week one at Rector. That includes Dakota Wilkins, Riley Grubb, Dylan Willer, Bryden Hewitt. They're all in tonight and they're all healthy. Now, Comstock did come off the field, and he's still over here a little bit ginger, you can tell. And I, I don't know what if that's – it almost seems like it's a groin injury, but now he's looking at his leg. There's, I don't know. We're, we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> don't ask us. <laughs> we, just, we just work here. All right, four spread out, three to the near side. Shotgun formation, get Terrace to his side. Hands off to number two in white. Did he hang on to that football? It was a little dangerous. I don't think he did. I think it's a fumble, but I think he got back on it. Either way, we recovered. But it's going to bring up a third down along with 5.30 to go here in the opening quarter. Yeah, whenever he's running through that hole, he probably needs to have two hands, two forearms, and tuck tight against your torso. Yes. Because any of those Hoxie Mustang hands can sneak in there yeah. and jar that thing loose. And one of our keys to the game was, in bold capital letters, hang on to the football. That should be every week. And it really and should. And every day. It should for us if you, if you watch this this year. Third and seven, the Bobcat crowd gets into it here. Quick pass. That's going to be number eight, Dylan Lane. He's got a little bit of room, not much time to dance around there, though. I'm not sure he even gained a yard, maybe one. It's going to bring up a fourth down along. I cannot imagine that you're going for it. But your punter, Comstock, is not 100% right now. This will be interesting. Well, we're about to find out who the backup punter is. I see number nine, Dylan Richmond, coming out there. Let's see if it's him. Looks like Amaker is going to be the deep back here, and I think that's actually who's going to be the one. Um, that's going to be the one who is going to be uh, punting this football. 
yeah, keys to the game were defense has to limit big plays. Well, we haven't quite done that yet. Keep this mobile quarterback in check. We haven't seen a mobile quarterback yet this year. This is all new for us tonight. Darn good kick there by Gutierrez. And it moves Ethan Blocker back. He finally gets it. Makes two guys miss. Makes another guy miss. He broke another tackle. He's just everywhere. We can't bring him down. Finally, Gutierrez from the backside. Good effort. And second effort there by Gutierrez. Man, he made those first guys miss. He made a, he found a seam, and it wasn't big at all. Nah, he's pretty squirrely, man. He was not just uh, shedding tackles. He was kind of like jumping past arms. And, you know, what what does he do on the triple jump? <laughs> I don't have a triple jump number, but I know he was an all-conference guy last year. Again, he was a point guard and basketball coach. Says he makes all the catches in traffic. He's a great blocker on the edge. Most receivers, that's some of the toughest thing. And we got, we got a couple of good ones here at Corning. But a lot of receivers, they want all that fame of catching those you know, big-time passes and stuff, but they don't want to block. This kid does, number one uh, number one in black. First down and ten here, Hoxie in Bobcat territory already. Powell, handoff to Powell. He's on the far side. He's got a lot of room. He breaks a tackle off Parker Davis. He hurdles over a guy, but he's going to be clipped there in the air by senior captain Clay Smith, number 12 in white. Good job there. And we've got another Bobcat down at about the 40-yard line, and I can't tell who that is. And it's Comstock again, and he's in pain, folks. He is in some serious pain. He's having trouble getting up, and, I, and we have no idea here what's going on. And uh, There he goes. He, he does get up, and he's going to walk back. Coach Treadway is about halfway on the field here, and so is Coach Golden. And Trevor Poe's all the way out there. <laughs> Trevor Poe's pretty quick now. Yeah, he, I didn't even see him get out there. <laughs> Poe says, come with me, son. Come with me. And now he's going to take his time getting off the field. <laughs> well, give, his, give his fellow teammate and defenders a chance to, to rest. He gave it an A-plus effort getting to him and uh, getting off the field is going to take a little bit longer. And, uh, again, you've got four wide here. This is not a formation you see a whole lot from Hoxie. Normally it's a three wide with a running back. They do go four wide, and every once in a while two wide. High snap, handoff. No, he fakes the handoff. It was a read option, and he kept it. And, my goodness, he's breaking tackles. He's on the far side. Finally, Gutierrez brings him down. And uh, and I think – I'm sorry, I apologize. Or – our director is needing something. I, I'm so sorry, guys. I do apologize. Our director was needing something there, and I had no idea what he was talking about. We were trying to do hand signals there, and that did not work. I'm not smart enough for that. So 14-0 Hoxie. It's 3.56 to go in the first quarter here in Lawrence County on a cool night. Leave the bananas at home. No cramps tonight. Won't be needed on this cool night. A little bit of wind here. They said we'd have up to 25 mile an hour gusts. We have not felt that yet. There's a snap. Handoff up the middle, Powell runs by a guy, but not Jared Seelig. There's our CSR player of the week. They're going to blow it dead. Good job by number 64 in white. That's the senior. He is your strongest uh, Bobcat with a 325-pound bench press. He even power cleans 285, and he's pretty darn smart. 4.0 GPA. 4.0, man. That's the that's the kicker there. I, I mean, always go for the uh, – not the athletic scholarship, but go for that uh, academic scholarship, buddy. Academic, yes, sir. I like it. And here we are, Hoxie, second down and eight, and they're driving again. Quarterback hand, uh, keeps it on a read option. He's got the edge, and I tell you what, he's got so much speed it does not matter. He's going to score yet again. That's going to make it 20 to nothing. Hoxie with 3.13 to go here in the opening quarter as the fireworks go off on homecoming. And I tell you what, again, we talked about earlier, speed kills. You either have it or you're chasing it. You know, Speed does kill Andy, but these uh, these offensive tackles for Hoxie are doing a great job of keeping their blocks and, and sealing that edge to make sure that our defensive ends aren't able to force him back inside where they have help. That's an extremely good uh, uh, thing that you've seen there because, again, they have 19 guys over 200 pounds. That attempt is blocked. I couldn't tell who blocked it. I think it might have been Red Eddington, the sophomore. Good job getting a hand up. That was a line drive. Not sure it would have went in anyways, but – Either way, it keeps it at 20 to nothing here with 3.13 to go in the first quarter. That was so low, I think I would have ducked to try to miss it. <laughs> Coming in hot and heavy. Go weapons hot. Close that, to being a worm burner. That's very, very true. And speaking of the Hoxie offensive line, I want to give some love to a kid, and he's a junior, Zane Alice, the center. You know, we usually on, on – on newspaper articles or on the TV shows or whatever, maybe your live streams, you don't hear about the centers very much. But Hoxie's got a really good one. He's a pancake machine. I watch tape. He's the best center I have seen on tape this year, number 56 in black. Watch out for him, guys. Uh, again, 6'4", 260, uh, just a pancake machine this year. Now, they had a, a deep snapper or a center whenever we were in school that played, I think, for Ole Miss. Who was that? Do you remember? 
I, I don't know. I remember they had a Brett Strabel that uh, was a transfer from Walnut Ridge that was a quarterback, ended up punting at ASU. I do remember that. I, I don't remember the Ole Miss um, player, and I apologize. Maybe somebody on our live stream does. Do we have any uh, social media here? We'll get to it in just a minute. Bo Young catches it far side about the 20-yard line, gets up to the 25, but won't get any further, maybe the 26, and that's where the Bobcats will start their um, next possession at uh, of the night. And the Bobcat offense returns nine starters from last season. They're averaging 22 points a game midway through the season, but 32 points a contest in road games. Listen to this stat. It's, it's too late to tell about it now, but they were 2-0 when scoring on the first drive. Well, they didn't score on the first drive, so that may not be a good idea there. And I think Jared's got a little bit more uh, information there for you for Corning. Yeah, so our Russian game made a return last week, last week at Manila with over 200 yards rushing. I would love to have that every single ball game, Andy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The passing game is really starting to click, too. It had – it hasn't looked too much better over the last three weeks as Smith has thrown four touchdowns through the air through that span. It has, Still yeah. having issues turning the ball over and yes. uh, untimely penalties. Very good, yes. I, I was just going to say that. You know, offense has done some things good, but they've also done some things wrong too. Handoff, Gutierrez up the middle. He's bouncing around. They're trying to find a hole or a seam. But those big old, big old defensive tackles there and defensive ends of Hoxie gobble him up there. You know, with this corning offense, and as I've watched them throughout the season, it seems like whenever they're moving the ball real well down the field, then that's when they have the untimely penalties and the, and the turnovers on the other side of the field. And tonight it just looks like we had one drive where we moved the ball real well, but we've just not really – we got to get some space. we got to try to maybe get back to that screen game because it was working pretty effectively. I, I could not agree more. And that was kind of Hoxie's issue last week against Newport. They were driving the ball a lot, but getting down to the 30-yard line and they turn it over. They're looking to pass. Dangerous pass. Number two was all over. Hayden Riggs, the all-conference running back. He tore his ACL last season. But I tell you what, he averaged seven yards a carry on offense, and you can tell he is an athlete as well. Speaking of, I don't know that we have played a team yet, and this includes EPC, so keep this in mind. Don't think we've played a team yet with overall team speed, as you're going to see out here. They have fantastic cover corners. Watched them on tape, four games, and they have fantastic cover corners, and they've got speed just about everywhere, especially the skill positions. Well, I hope to see Bo Young kind of sneak back there. He's had several big catches all season long. Uh, I'd, I'd put my money on Bo on just about anybody. I am with you on that. Money on Bo. Doe on Bo. Doe like on Bo. Doe on Bo. 2.26 to go here in the opening corner. 20 nothing. Smith, pump. And there we go. We're going to Bo Young. We'll stop and go. He's going to overthrow him. And I tell you what, I thought number 18 there, River Brewer kind of give up on that. I thought he could have picked that ball off. I thought maybe a defensive hold on the on the defensive back there. I don't know. Looked like he tried to cut up and up his across his front side and maybe kind of grabbed a little jersey there. That wasn't even really a stop and go. They faked the comeback route. He actually turned around like he was getting the comeback route and then spun around. But when he spun around, the defensive back, like Jared said, was all over him. Yeah, I, I thought that they might be a, worth a flag there. I think he said Old Spice Cologne. I think he knew exactly what he was wearing. <laughs> he was all over him. Amaker to punt now. Fourth down and ten. High arcing punt, but it's not going to go too far. Maybe we'll get a good bounce. Almost hits a Hoxie player. That was so close. If that would have hit him, that would have been a huge break. And you've got to yell something there if you're the punt returner. I think he was. He froze. <laughs> and it's not from this cold wind out here in Hoxie, Arkansas. He just froze in place uh, <laughs> like coach was yelling at him or something. He was getting in trouble by his mom. He just yeah. stiffened up. Yeah, that's when you get the full name there. It's Charles Andrews then. I just told everybody my full name. What did I just do that for? This is live TV. What am I doing, man? The internet's what got am, you now. What am I doing? Hoxie gets fantastic field position here at the Bobcat 44-yard line, and it looks like – we're going to have a different uh, quarterback in here. Is that – no, no, it's not. I apologize. Same quarterback here. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going for the slant. Diving attempt there. Good attempt by the Hoxie receiver. We don't have a number yet on that. Number one, that's going to be the uh, Ethan, Blo Ethan Blocker, I should say, the senior, 5'9", 145. Great attempt there on the quick slant. And he darn near brought that in, Jared. They've got the, they've got the digital down sticks, but – they couldn't get him some gloves on this cold day. <laughs> Might would have been able to haul well, that one in there now with listen, the old stick listen, gloves. Hey, listen, everyone's different, but I hate it. I, I never wore gloves, and there was a reason for it. There's something about that texture, that football, I'd rather feel all my bare hands than I would uh, the, the gloves. So, And there we go, read option, quarterback keeps it again. Pow, he's going to try to break a tackle. He will not do a great job, Parker Davis. That's a sophomore. How many times have you seen him make tackles in open field this year? I don't know. That quarterback keeps fooling me every single time. It looks like he's putting the ball in the belly of his uh, running back, and then my eyes are getting deterred on him, 
and I don't even see him. He's already 10 yards downfield before I even realized he kept it. Exactly. Folks, we're having all kinds of trouble with a couple of cameras here. Colton, our uh, producer, is trying his best to get some of these cameras going. Um, we have not had a chance to really get any social media interaction because of that, and I do apologize. We'll try to get some here. Again, we do have a um, trivia question. We have a few guesses here. And, uh, oh, there's a quick pass over to the far side. Got a blocker ran by. Ah, guy, he's finally going to be. No, he's still up. Finally going to be brought down to see number 72 in there. And I tell you what, that's Colin Wilson all the way out there in the flats. you got to like that. Bruce and Brenda McGrew says 93. Dana Hunt said 82. Brenda Yielding, let's go, boys. You can do this. You can do this. You Mike, can do it. Mike Hawks, let's go, Bobcats. You can do it. Hang it tough. Lonnie Jordan, let's go, Bobcats. Leslie Foster, what's the score? Well, Leslie, right now it's 20 to nothing with 1.15 to go in the first quarter with Hoxie driving second down and five here. Lori Mox says go, Bobcats. Patty Parts says go, Bobcats. Leah, uh, Leah Kilberth, Amanda Wiedemann are also watching. Dana Hunt, um, should I tell him if it's wrong or right? I should wait to say if it's right when the right person gets it, correct? I'm wanting to say, Andy, can I can I give him no, a hint? No. No can, hints you, here? No, no hints. Not until the second quarter. Not until the second 55 quarter. 55 seconds to go. And they're going deep play action. It's a dying duck. Amherst going to try to come back and get it, and he just couldn't get it. Matter of fact, the receiver almost helped him get to it, it seemed like. <laughs> Scott Dodd and Joyce Huckabee are watching. Connie Pendergrass is 87. And uh, I'm not going to give the correct answer until I see it. Again, one guess per Facebook page or YouTube account. I won't give the correct answer until I see it. Again, the trivia question is, how many football games have been played total in the Corning Pigot football rivalry? Jared Grady is watching. Thank you, Jared. I'll pop over to the YouTube and see if uh, we have anybody commenting. Michael White here. is watching. Sierra Powell's watching. Claudette Couch is watching. Thank you. Katie Grady's watching. She's checking on you, buddy. She's checking on you. Third down and four. <laughs> There's the handoff to the far side. My goodness, look at the speed. He's going to hurdle a guy, and he's still going. He's got one man to beat the sophomore, Red Eddington. Does he do it? He's staying bounds. It looks like he did. Touchdown, Hoxie, with 39 seconds to go in the opening quarter. That's 26. Hoxie corning nothing. And there goes the fireworks again. Robert Wilkins on YouTube is guessing 42. Okay. Good guess, Robert. Kathy Poe's watching. Tasha K says 64. Ramey Shippen, Tina Storms, Amber Hollis, Dana Hunt, Bobby Small says, Go Bobcats, Kylie Michelle, Adam Besson says, 36, Myrna Stacy is watching, Miss Montgomery is watching, Let's Go Bobcats, Jim Woods watching, Lonnie Jordan says, 126, as Hoxie is going for the extra point attempt here. Again, 39 seconds to go, 26 nothing, and that's going to be River Brewer there. Good kick, and I tell you what, he looks good kicking it too, man. He's got good form and everything. It is good, it's going to be 27 to nothing on a homecoming night here for the team out of Lawrence County. There's two of them. Maybe we should move him back to NFL style field 31 goals uh, <laughs> after PATs. 31 yard. Blaine Jets watching. Kayla Curse says 42. Still have not got the right answer yet. I'm not going to tell it until. Well, I guess it's the same if I tell them the wrong, though, if I don't tell them the right, right? So you're wrong. Kayla, you're wrong. Felicia Durham. <laughs> Yeah, but Donovan now you Gunnery sound so 36. pessimistic. That's true. I need, wrong. I, need, I need to lay off that. You're right. I agree. I'm glad I got a side I, mate tonight. I, I, like your, I like your strategy with just waiting for the right one. Yeah. That's what I did whenever with, with, I with found Katie? my wife. With, with Katie, Katie yeah, yeah. I waited for the right one. She, you had an opportunity to suck up. You waited for the right moment, and you took it, brother. Uh, well, Give me some. <laughs> you I said like that it. she was watching, so <laughs> I can't not take that Folks, opportunity. that was smooth. That was silky smooth by Buttery Jerry Grady. smooth. Butter. 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 And Jansen says 53 on to Almendanger is watching. Linda Johnson is also watching. Don, Bur or Don Burkhart says 45. Kerry Robinson is watching. Verna Godwin. Nicholas Murphy says 48. Kickoff. High end over end over to Bo Young. I tell you, he, he probably could have let that go and went out of bounds. Either way, he catches it and he's dancing around. You can't do that back here on a kickoff return. That's never going to work. Maybe a couple little hops here or there, but you got to pick a hole and go. Andy, I'm no, I'm no rule professional here, but okay, if you catch that kickoff with one foot inbounds, one foot out of bounds. That's where the ball is placed. That's where the ball is placed. Yes, sir. well, it's not where your foot's at. It's where the ball's at, keep in mind. But if your foot's out of bounds, you catch it, it's wherever the ball is at. So if, the, if, you, if you're launching, obviously, it's going to be ahead of where that foot is. If you're leaning back on your heels, it's going to be wherever, you know. Because I've seen some NFL plays, and I know NFL rules are way different oh, than the and high and school. And they change them all the time. Where they, where the ball had stopped just a, or was about to stop just a yard away from the sideline, and players would reach for out of bounds and touch the football, so that way it would be a penalty on the kickoff. And here we are, first down and ten for the 
Bobcats. Finally, we got a little bit of a quarterback keeper there. We have not seen that yet. Clay Smith with a 40-second play clock. This could be the final play of the first quarter, 20 seconds and counting with a 35-second play clock. Again, 20 nothing. Hoxie. Ronnie Jones is watching. Ronnie, care to take a guess at that, Silver Fox? What's the trivia question here? Let's do it again here. How many football games have been played total in the Corning Pigot football rivalry? The Rice Bowl. How many games total? Kayla Curtis says, to be fair, that was my husband's guess, not mine. <laughs> She's playing the cards. You know what? I tell you what, it's so fine. Throw another one out there. I don't care. I was going to say she gets another guess if that was her husband's. I said one Facebook account, but that's okay. We'll, we'll just deal with it. Oh, one Facebook account. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm a rule breaker. He is. He's a rebel. The Midnight Hours. So can I, kill, oh, go ahead. can I give my, my hint? I don't know if that's fair, though. You know what? Fine. You know, this is our company. We can break the rules. Do it. Go well, for it. it. It might get us more views. Did you did you mention this in a previous? Uh, you look unsatisfied with me for saying that. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> May, well, I didn't mention the total number, but I did mention the series. Okay, so, I got you. So that, that was people like digging back in the, in the live streams trying to find because they are recorded. Well, you know what, everybody, stay on this one. We don't want to, we don't want your <laughs> eyeballs to be taken <laughs> off of this one. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned that. We're already having to compete with the St. Louis Cardinals for eyeballs, but <laughs> hopefully people have that on their TVs. Hey. They have this on their tablets or on their computers. Uh, yeah, that's true. And listen, if anybody has a Cardinal score, please keep, uh, please update us. I, you know, and I'm not the guy that's gonna. I'm very professional. You're you're a Braves fan, obviously, and the Cardinals obviously uh, spanked the Braves there. And, but but listen. I'm not the kind of guy to talk about that on live TV, okay? I'm not the kind of guy to say, hey, the Braves, you know, had two games to win one against the Cardinals and they didn't get it done. I'm just not that type of guy, Jared. So I, there's no way I'd sit here and rub it in that the Cardinals are playing tonight and the Braves are at home or they're gone fishing. So I, I'm just not that type of guy. I just wanted you to know that. I, I, thank you, Andy, so much. No, I've already, I've already sat in the closet and cried and lit candles and blew candles out. I'm over it. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're, uh, you're past that. So flag light. A little extracurricular activity, and the uh, the referee is a weak toss, but it got up near high enough to where we could see it. And who came out of the pile there? It's Clay Smith. I don't know what the extra uh, extracurricular activity is going to be, though. The white hat finally has his decision. He's going to go over here and make the call. Let's see what he says. Personal foul on Hoxie, the home team. Wow. Well, the Bobcats needed something there with 11.50 to go here in the second quarter, and they may have just gotten a little bit of uh, a little gots in there, if you will. Get a little momentum here. Again, Rachel Arnold's watching. Shelly Luttrell's watching. Nathan Carvin says 68. Not quite, Nathan. Penny Stallings is watching. Zach Hogger's watching. Sydney Cox. Katie, Gra uh, Katie Grady. Listen to this. He chose the right night to suck up because Vin and I are getting to listen and watch. There we go. That's awesome. I oh, love you, babe. There you oh, very nice. Very nice. And I love my son, Ben. There Benjamin Wayne go. Grady. Benjamin, I like it. Man in motion, Crosby, hand it off to him, jet sweep. He cuts it up, good choice there, I like that. And he's still going, look at the fight by number 11 in white. Love it, absolutely love it. That's a tough, tough kid there. He only goes 5'8", 190, but again, he bench presses 280 pounds. Man, we got some guys helping us out here. We got a little coffee, uh, a little hot cocoa maybe. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know, what is that? No, oh, that's definitely hot cocoa. I, it may be a Miller Lite. I have no idea. Either way, we're going to sip on it because it looks good. Madison White is also watching. Bobcats have second down and five here with 11.07 to go, trailing 20 to nothing on homecoming night for Hoxie. Giovanni Rungel is watching. Scott Ward. Score graphic is wrong. Yes, that's that's true, but Colton, our uh, our uh, director, has got all kinds of issues he's dealing with. It's actually 27 to nothing, um, Hoxie. Again, 10.51 to go here. They're going to lose about two on that play, I think, Jared. It's going to bring up about third down and seven. What do you do here, Jared? Uh, you obviously got to dial something up that works that gets you seven yards. Uh, any, anything and everything. Maybe talk a little trash in their ear and get another little personal foul. I do want to talk about Hoxie, number 40. He pursued us from the opposite side of the field. He didn't get the tackle. But, man, that was some great effort by that young, young man. Yeah, listen, I know we're coining sports support. We've definitely got to give them some credit, too. Smith looking to pass, three-step drop. He's going deep. He's got Riley Grubb. Riley Grubb turns around. He almost catches it. He's knocked around. They're going to throw a flag. Maybe, 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 maybe. No, no, no. I guess not. Either way, we can always hope for it. Speaking of trash talking, were you a trash talker back when you played? No, I wasn't actually. I was uh, too focused on what I needed to do. My brain doesn't think that fast. Oh, okay, okay. 10-4. Again, 27 to nothing. Hoxie here, 10-17 to go. 
fourth down and seven for Corning. Looks like they're going to punt Amaker back to punt again, I think, for the third time tonight. Kyle Williams is watching. Chelsea Rose is watching. Justin's camera is, is not working, Chelsea. And so that's our problem tonight. It's all Justin's fault, Chelsea. I just want you to know. I'm kidding. He's doing a great job. We appreciate him being here. Joey Reed's watching. Krista Balsiger's watching. Dwayne Ray. Krista Balsiger said 93. Samuel Irwin is watching. High punt. Look at that. That's a long one, too. It's a beauty. Beautiful punt. B-E-A, beautiful. The Bobcats, Rhett Eddington will down it at the 33-yard line. Haley Turner says 56. Not quite Haley. Ron Turner's watching. Bruce and Brendan are going to Rob Arms watching. Shayla Amaker, we appreciate you. Pam Brown's watching. Bruce and Brenda McGrew, 0-0 card score. one nothing Nats. No. No. Top of the second. Bessie Dowdy. It's Natitude, I guess, there. 51 is the guess for Chris Wellman. That is wrong, Chris. Ronnie Jones, thanks for rubbing it in there, buddy. one nothing Nationals. Top second. But, hey, I appreciate the score update. And, again, yes, it is 27 to nothing for folks uh, at home. Again, Colton is uh, our director. He's, he's really busy trying to fix the camera right now, and it's actually our most important camera, too. Handoff up the middle. Man, he's met and met by a couple of them. It's going to be Landon Berry and Jared Selig out there on the stop. Leah Perry says Nationals won. Thank you. Thank you, guys, for the updates. Jimmy Leach, yes, it is. They are at Hoxie tonight. The title just wasn't changed. Again, yeah, we – listen, we had – you wouldn't believe – I don't even want to talk about it. Don't even want to talk about it. I'm not going to get into it. I'm, not, I'm, I'm better than that. I'm going to take the high road. I'm going to take the high road. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, we, we were promised something. We got here. It wasn't the case. Miranda Smith is watching. Rhonda Murray Turner says 70. Not quite. We're getting closer, though. Courtney Bechet is watching. Bechet Ladd, Earthly Mile. Second down and long for Hoxie. Looking to pass. He steps up a couple different times. Breaks a tackle. Red Anderson, he tried to tackle him, but he just couldn't do it. He's going to hurdle over a guy, but he's going to be brought down. Good job there by number five, Bryden Hewitt, for bringing him down. Folks, you, you may not see a more athletic quarterback in 3-3-A the rest of the season than number 13, Dalen Powell. Man, I tell you, he got really lucky. Jared Selig was did a great job doing a little spin move on his uh, on the blocker, and he just got a hand on him as he ran by him. Jared yeah. Selig, if he gets a hand on you, it's not very often that he's not going to bring you down. That's a very good point with 9.06 to go here in the second quarter. Helen Cochran says 91, not quite. Scott Ward said 76 games between Pitt and Courtney, not quite. Close, getting closer, though. High pass, it's caught somehow. High pointed by number 44. That's going to be Ethan Kopp. He's still going. I think he's going to take it to the house, and he does. Number 44, Ethan Kopp, six foot, 166 senior. He's a wide receiver and an offensive or outside linebacker for Hoxie. My goodness, it's, uh, it's a great night if you're a Hoxie Mustang because the fireworks are going off 8.48 to go. In the second quarter, folks, our scoreboard won't show it, but it is 33 to nothing. Hoxie, they came in a 30-point favorite tonight, and now you can kind of see why. Again, this old line has been really good for Hoxie tonight. They did allow five sacks last week against Newport, but I tell you what, we're just not getting any pressure tonight. They, they sure that up on this week's practice. Yeah, those Corning Crushers up front, I mean, yeah, like you said, they're not getting any penetration. They're – Doing a good job trying to keep the, the edges sealed, but just not able to get in the backfield. There comes a point in time in some games where they just they, they have more they have more horses for the courses, and, and they got the right horses for this course, I can promise you. And uh, it, it's just tough. Again, we said it earlier, speed kills. You either have speed or you're chasing speed, and, and tonight they've definitely got it. I, I tell you, the Bobcat defense coming into this hasn't played bad. They really haven't. I mean, yeah, they're giving up 27 points a game. But, again, the offense has scored, you know, turned the ball over a lot and, and given them short fields. Honestly, this defense has forced, what, was it eight turnovers, seven turnovers this year, Jared? Yeah, okay. um, eight, eight turnovers this year, which isn't too shabby. No, it's more than they had last year, and this is just halfway through the year, and uh, that's fantastic. Matter of fact, they got their first shutout the Bobcats defense did since 2013 last week. Think about that now. First shutout since 2013. First conference road win, I believe, as well since uh, 2014, I believe. Uh, if, if we have that information too. So big-time stuff last week. Uh, this team is bucking a lot of trends this year. Yeah, they absolutely are, and I think that was 2013 was the last okay. shutout. Um, yes, yes. Something else there is Jared Selig, man. I, I know I've talked about him a lot, but he's an impressive uh, defender there on the D-line. I agree. I tell you what, Amaker just caught that with his hands, and I have no idea, and somehow gets a heck of a return there. How does that is not easy catching an end over end kick on a cold night when you're going backwards with your hands on a kickoff? That's crazy. Without gloves. Without gloves. I yeah. love it. Matt Carpenter style for the Cardinals. Yeah. I love it. 
All right, let's see what else on these guesses. Mike Maples watching, Mallory Griffin, Judy Ward's watching. Joey Reed, they need to put code on offense. He has the speed. He does have the speed. He is a burner. I call him Flash. Bart White's watching. Bart White's supposed to be on the radio tonight. Why is he watching? He's right behind me. I see him. Look at that smile. He looks like a Ninja Turtle back here. Hey, Bart. How you doing, brother? <laughs> Melody Penning says 78. <laughs> which, which turtle would Bart be? <laughs> oh, man, that's a good question. I, I'll give him Raphael. He's got a little bit no, of attitude. No, he's no there. Raphael. Are you kidding me? Maybe He's Michael not the smart Angelo. one. He's not the smart one. Which one's the smart one? Well, that's Donatello. Donatello. He's that's not the, Donnie. He's the blue guy. He's not Donnie. Gutierrez up the middle on the handoff. I call him the white Charles Barkley. That's terrible. Oh, that's just terrible. <laughs> the white Charles Barkley. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I like it. All right, guys. Bart Weiss is a great job, Andy. Tell Grady I'm coming for his job. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He probably does it better than me. No. Hey, listen. Jared, Jared's the best uh, color man in the business. Oh, boy, don't don't even bring that up. <laughs> Lori Mock says 64. Not quite, Lori. Hey, everybody keep guessing. I don't even care. If you've already had a guess, just throw another one out there. I want a winner in this. Again, trivia question. How many football games have been played total in the Corning Pickett football rivalry? Second down 10 for Bobcats. They're looking to pass out the shotgun. He arches it high up in the air. Not quite a pot of gold into that rainbow. Good catch by assistant coach Gunnar Cook showing off in front of his old pals at Hoxie. Yeah. That was a nice catch. It put him right in the bread basket, just the wrong bread basket. Yeah, that's very true. I tell you what, he put some air under that pass right there. My goodness. You know, in that last Rainmaker. possession, I kind of liked that pass that he gave to Riley Grubb. It's just, you know, I think he had a hard time turning around and finding it. I agree. I agree. You know, Hoxie's biggest issue last week was getting down in, in scoring territory and turning the ball over. They are not doing that tonight. My goodness, big O, I can't tell if that was number 58. Keaton Stroud, I believe, the junior, 5'9", 280 was in there. There was another one in there for Hoxie. I'm trying to get a number there for the Hoxie fans and, and parents. Number 30, River Whaley. Again, that kid power claims 280 pounds, a senior, 6'2", 190. They're getting in there. And uh, Scott Ward says 84 games. i tell you what, guys, here's our hint. Scott Ward was really close. Andy, Con I have another guess over here on YouTube. I'm doing a terrible job with this. Just T terrible. Newbin, You're doing a just terrible Newbin job. Just Newbin has guessed 87. Okay. Okay. We're, we're, again, we're we're in the wheelhouse. Fourth down and long. Probably the fifth or sixth punt. Amaker, good punt. High snap. It didn't matter. Let's see if it takes a bobcat bounce. It does not. Good job by Riley Grubb. It looks like that. It looks like that turf is like a trampoline, man. He was just running, and kind of boom, boom. Went up there, grabbed that thing. Good job, Riley. It's like run jumping like a deer. Yeah. Just looks he's like he, a deer running right, out there. Riley's fast like a deer now. I mean, Riley is uh, – he it goes 5'8", 170, but that kid is finally fully healthy and he can run. What else do we got there, Justin? We've got 53, 59, 73. <laughs> Everyone's trying. 86, we're getting close. 73, 83 by Haley Turner, 82 by uh, Will, uh, Kelly uh, Brickley. I apologize. What else we got over on YouTube? Uh, right now it's just uh, Just Newbin with the 87. i got to count the first one. Can't count the second one of 92. First down and 10, Hoxie at their own 48-yard line. 7-17 to go. It is 34 to nothing here in Lawrence County. Bouncing it out to the running back Powell. And I'll tell you what, good job by Bo Young. Powell's got all kinds of speed. Uh, he is Shunderick is the fastest uh, Hoxie Mustang. Listen to this. 4-4-40 speed. 4-4-40 wow. four, four, speed by number seven in black. He's also on the Bubba Noakes 42 Sports 3A Player of the Year watch list. He breaks a lot of tackles, had a 95-yard touchdown run against Westside earlier in the season. And, guys, listen, speaking of YouTube, we're trying to get some YouTube folks. We've got 81, 82, 90, 79, 88. I still haven't seen the right answer. My goodness. Guys, we're all over it. It's like dartboards here. How close can we get without hitting it? What we got on YouTube? Anything? Uh, same thing. First down and 10, 6.48 to go. Play clock at 9 seconds. Uh, not an option here. Quarterback keep on the redout. He is mad, and Matt Hardy's lit up. Holy hay bales. What a hit by number 25, Red Eddington, and number 64, Jared Selig. Look, Ma, there goes that man again. Yep, Jared Selig. We've, we're going to say that name a lot this year. Woo! Right now it's just second down. Let's get them in a third and long situation. Yes. I don't know if our defense has had one yet this ball game. To, to be able to pin their ears back and really go after them. I tell you what, uh, that was a great job by the defensive front there. They pinned their ears and they got aggressive. That's what they did last week, too. I like that. I like that. Got to force them to third and longs or get some turnovers here on this side of the field. I totally agree. We got some guesses here. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, oops, sorry. 88. 80. Leah, Pel uh, Leah Kilbreth. Da -da 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 winner, winner. Parkview dinner, and I tell you what, there he goes again, number seven in black. That's going to be a touchdown for Hoxie with 5.53 to go here in the second quarter. My goodness, 40 to nothing, Hoxie. Now it's just a, you're shell-shocked at this point. Leah Kilbreth is your winner of the 
Debbie Rose Hill 60-minute massage as the fireworks are going off here at homecoming. Uh, I believe she's the winner anyways. We might go back and double-check it, so hold, hold the phone there, Leah, because we're having issues getting signal over here with her. But we believe you're the winner. Uh, with, and the number is 80, by the way. 80 games have been played between those two teams. Uh, and, yes, she, she is the winner. She's also going to get a $50 Parkview restaurant uh, gift card, or voucher, I should say, not card, voucher. And the field goal is up. It is good. That's going to make it 41 to nothing. Hoxie here again on homecoming in Lawrence County. And good job there by Leah. Fantastic job. 80 was the number. She got that one right. 80 games. Do you care to guess? Um, does anybody care to guess what the – this is not a trivia question. But does anybody care to guess what the overall series record is? You want to you guess? Take a guess at it, Jerry? Whoa. I don't want to make anybody upset, but I'm going to say 41-39. Just, my math is okay on that one. J- Justin, what do you think, bud? Corning. Corning's favor, 41-30. Guys are close. Colton, you want a shot at it? He says no. Overall, and I, I did extensive research the last two years, by the way, speaking of. Listen to this. This is the biggest small-town rivalry in Arkansas, in my opinion. And there's a good one here right here in Lawrence County between Honks and Want Ridge. But I, I'm telling you, Corning Pig, listen to this. 39 wins for Corning. Oh. 38 wins for Piggott and three ties. Oh, I didn't even think of ties, yeah. Isn't it? That's crazy. That's unbelievable how close that series has been. Again, the biggest small town rivalry in Arkansas, if you ask this man. Again, 4 10 to go here in the first half, and it is 41 to nothing. Hoxie Mustangs. And there goes Bo Young. And man, he caught it with a head of steam. He slows down to find a hole, and he just can't quite do it. Good kick coverage team there by the Hoxie Mustangs. Fantastic job. Guys, share this live stream. Hit the share button on your Facebook there if you can for us. Pretty, pretty please. You never know. You may have someone in your friends list that might see this, that might happen to have someone in their friends list when they share that uh, could be an assistant coach somewhere or maybe know somebody, and that person's able to see uh, one of these kids on film when normally they wouldn't be able to do that. So uh, please do that for us if you do not mind. Share this uh, stream for us and, and get some more viewers out there, more exposure for all these kids, Hoxie and Corny, if you don't mind for us. 3.20 to go. Running game clock here. First down and 10. Smith looking to pass. Quick pass. Slant. Grub. He catches it with his hands. Good job. A little bit behind him, but he was able to bring it down. And that's the first pass. Oh, sorry. Second passing attempt to number 20 tonight. Riley Grub. Love that play call, though. Little slant there. Getting some action across the middle of the field. Have Giving your guys a chance to catch it and make some yak yards there. Yards after contact. I love it. And by the way, we've got some guys. I wish we'd been keeping the yak yards. We may tally them up later in the season. We've got some guys got quite a bit. Same play off. Oh, it's deflected twice by number eight, Dylan Lane. And I tell you what, that ball went up in the air like a like a set for a volleyball spike. That's dangerous. Yeah, now passing across the middle of the field, that is the, the risk you take. If you can't quite get those sticky hands, snatch that ball out of the air like a it's, Traylon Burks for Arkansas. Traylon Boy, that guy's Burks. got some great hands. Yeah. If you don't have those kind of hands, that can be a little risky throwing across the middle of the field. Especially when you when you look there the whole time. You know, I know I know it's a quick pass, but obviously when you're looking that way, they know it's coming. And it's going to be third down and short for the Bobcats. They're looking to pass again, a little out route there to Crosby. It was thrown just a little bit low. You know, listen, not making any excuses for him, but it's cold out here tonight for the first time. You're down 41 to nothing early. You know, it's like, oh, man. And then, again, to get the grip on that football, you got some big old boys coming at you. Easier said than done. Absolutely. Looks like they're keeping the offense out there, too. Let's convert this fourth down. I like it. And I really don't know what you do here, Jared. I'm not sure what you would do if you were a coach. And we've got to get number eight, Dylan Lane, off the uh, field there, as we do. And let's see what they decide to do. Is this going to be a quarterback sneak? you got two yards. Can you get that on a quarterback sneak? Let's see. And the line, it's like a tug of war right now. It looks like Hoxie's going to win it. No, the Bobcats are still going. Now the ball's loose. Hoxie comes up with it. They're going to bring it back for a touchdown, but the whistle had already blown. And, of course, the Hoxie coaches are livid on the other side. They're thinking that's a touchdown for Hoxie. You've probably never seen that Hoxie defender run that fast, man. He saw the end zone and wanted wanted some six points there. Yeah, exactly. You know, your eyes get really big when you're a defender like that, which I think that was number 30, and if that is, that is a River Whaley. We have called his name tonight, the senior, 6'2", 190, power cleans 280 pounds, and he looks every bit of that. He looks tough now. He really does. I don't know about you, but if I'm on the defensive line and I get a football like that, which they called it back, but if I get a football like that, it's like Christmas morning on your first Christmas. <laughs> you were just giddy with excitement. Exactly. 
and, and Sherry Midikoff over says Bobcats got some uh, some hosses and some hitters. Yes, they do. I agree. Herbert Ellis is watching. Mark Woods is watching. And Tara Kegley is watching. Josh Jensen. Randy, Randy Mack is watching. Carla Bell is watching. And we do have a winner again in our first half trivia. It's Leah Kilbrush. She guessed 80, and she was right. Good job, Leah. And there's another run. And I tell you what, he's got the edge. He's got the near side here, and he's going to take it to the house. Number three, Davey Powell. How many pals do they have over here at Hoxie that can run? Four, five, 40 speed. The sophomores, 5'7", 153. He got the edge, and he would have he scored in flag football as the fireworks are still going off here. And, man, that was the that's going to be the last play of the first half, 47 to nothing. Again, if you're just joining us, 47 to nothing, Hoxie. They have absolutely jumped all out uh, on homecoming night here on the Bobcats. And you will get the extra point attempt here because it's an untimed down, even though the clock says triple zeros. Six-second play clock, though. They do have to get it off for the play clock, though. Three seconds. Snaps high, but he holds. Good kick, and it looks like it's good anyways. I shouldn't uh, say that just so uh, fast, but it was good. That's going to bring it to 48 to nothing here in the first half. And I tell you what, uh, we're about to go to sponsors, but hang on just a second here. i got a, a few things to talk about here. Number one, guys, is, is we need some subscribers to YouTube. So I've got the dumbest marketing strategy in the, in, in the history of mankind, okay? If, okay, I'm getting ready. If we can get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube for our Corning Sports Report page, YouTube channel, before basketball season, I will ride a live bull, okay? Say it one more time. 1,000 subscribers before basketball season, I, Andy Earls, will ride a live bull. It's the dumbest marketing strategy in the history of mankind, but it's so diabolical, so crazy, it might just work. And you know what? If, if you're ever wondering, no, it's not going to be me dressed up in a bull outfit and Andy riding on top of me. I'm going to make sure that this guy rides a real one. He's going to be the rodeo clown because that's what friends are for. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's backpedaling back a little bit. So, guys, we, we really do seriously. And, again, share this tonight if you can for us. We really would appreciate that. Also, one more note. Where's Growl? Growl, get up here. Get up here. I want to see if I can get him on camera. There's something going to go down next week I want you all to be a part of at homecoming. Get up here, Growl. Come on. Let's get him up here. Get up here, Growl. Sit right here, brother. So right here, my man. First of all, this guy has done a fantastic job this year. I love this kid now. He really has. Fantastic job, okay? But he's going to have to bring his A game next week, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. Next week at homecoming, growl, me, Andy, growl, dance off, dancing battle, next week at Bobcat Stadium live for homecoming. I tell you what, I can't dance to save my life, but I've got a week to figure it out. I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. Dance off. Are, you, do you accept? Do you accept? Can we shake on it? Y'all seen it right there. Homecoming dance off battle next week, live. No, no shot, baby. I got the, I got the moves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Hey. There you go. See, here he goes. I got a week to figure this out. So if anybody has any ideas, send them my way. I need all the prayer I can get, all the help I can get. It's gonna be on. It's on. Hey, buddy. We like Donkey you, Kong. Hey, good job. Good job. Proud of you, buddy. Hey, guys, listen. Again, if you're just tuning in with us, uh, you're enjoying Corning High Bobcat football live via the Corning Sports Report. Guys, we're going to take a second to pay our bills. You're going to hear and see from our sponsors. And we'll be right back at this word from them. Harold's Barbecue out of Corning, Arkansas. Proud sponsors of the Corning Bobcats. The best barbecue in town by stoplight. Stop by and say hi to the crazy pit master, Lyndon Massey. Carry out, dine in, catering. Come hungry, leave happy. Harold's Barbecue. A big thanks to Goodman Drug Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Kathy Goodman and staff would like to invite you to drop by for any of your pharmaceutical needs and or Razorback and Bobcat apparel. Drop by and see them Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.30 and Saturday, 9 to 1, or use the convenient drive-thru. Goodman Drug Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Red Taylor Ford, locally owned and operated by the Taylor family since 1977. Their company has been an integral part of the Corning community since their beginning, participating and or donating to basically every major community project to come before them. They have a top-notch service department, 
with master certified technicians. Contact them for all of your automotive needs at 870-857-3516 or at www.redtailorford.com. This is Mike Vincent, Certified Public Accountant. I've been a Bobcat fan for as long as I can remember, having worn the black and gold as a student years ago. Join me in supporting our students as they proudly represent our school and community. And come see me on 2nd Street in downtown Corning for all your tax and accounting needs. Go Bobcats! CSR would like to thank Parkview Restaurant of Corning, Arkansas for their sponsorship. Parkview offers breakfast, lunch, and supper, including daily plate lunches. And they have a deli with a variety of lunch meats and nightly specials. Amy and Danny and Jordan are big supporters of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Thank you to Parkview Restaurant. A special thanks to Richardson Family Dentistry out of Corning, Arkansas. Locally owned, locally operated, a fine dental office with a great staff that are all proud sponsors of the Corning Bobcat Athletics Program. Richardson Family Dentistry. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance Company introducing Ag Promise, an exceptional policy that protects everything farmers rely on. Ag Promise is a competitively priced, easy to understand, and tailored to meet your specific needs. That's Farm Bureau's commitment to you, and they have a team of local agents and adjusters ready to back it up. Give them a call today to protect your agri business. It's not complicated, it's a promise. Ag Promise, 870 857 6788. Hey all you Bobcats, this is Ty Price of Price Farms and I want to challenge everyone to attend at least five football games this year. Let's show our boys that we believe in them. Remember, once a Bobcat, always a Bobcat. A special thanks to Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation on their sponsorship. Whether it's grain bins, wells, pumps, underground pipe, or any service of that nature, Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation will take care of you. Rhonda and Jerry Solace would like to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. First Choice Healthcare in Corning, Arkansas, proud sponsors of Corning Bobcat Athletics, celebrating 25 years of community health care. At First Choice Healthcare, we practice compassionate, affordable health care for everyone to help improve lives and build healthier communities. First Choice Healthcare, your community, your health. CSR would like to give a special thanks to B&B Well Drilling out of Peach Orchard, Arkansas for their continued support of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Brian and Lisa Bass are proud, proud graduates of Corning High School, and they invite you to call them for any of your well drilling needs. 870-215-3808, B&B Well Drilling. A big thanks to Clay County Electric Co-op out of Corning, Arkansas for their sponsorship. CCE is an electric utility company in Clay County with dedicated workers and a friendly staff and have always been proud supporters of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Clay County Electric Co-op, 3111 US 67 Corning, Arkansas, 870-857-3521. A special thanks to Woolard Flying Service out of Corning, Arkansas for supporting Bobcat Athletics. Matt Wooler would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck this season and also remind them that the sky is the limit. Wooler Flying Service, 870-857-3839. A special thanks to Civil Engineering Associates for being proud sponsors of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Two locations, one in Jonesboro, one in Poplar Bluff. Professional engineer John Selig of CEA would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Keith and Rhonda Turner of K-Ron Farms would like to encourage the community to support the students of the Corning School District. Whether it is a sporting event or an academic accomplishment, these students are representing our school. We need to let them know how proud we are of them. Let's show our Bobcat pride. It's great to be a Bobcat. K-Ron Farms. Looking for a good and reliable used car? Stop by and see the father-son combination of Mark and Kyle Williams at Mark's Car ER Auto Sales. Proud sponsor of the Corning Bobcats, Locally owned and operated, 870-565-5046. Wiedemann Farms, 561 County Road 131 in Corning, Arkansas. Wiedemann Farms has been serving the Corning community since 1978. Larry and Mary Wiedemann are proud, proud supporters of not only the city of Corning, but of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Wiedemann Farms, go Cats. The Corning Sports Report would like to give a special shout out to Bosch Licker Brothers Farms, for sponsoring our endeavor. The Bosch Lickers have always been avid Bobcats and 
avid supporter of all things Corning Athletics. Thank you again, Bile Brothers Farms. First National Bank takes the banking experience and customizes it to fit you. Whether it's supporting your Corning Bobcats or saving you time by eliminating trips to the bank, First National Bank puts you first, always. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender, First National Bank. Corning Sports Report wants to give a special shout out to Jeremy and Amanda Wiedemann out of Corning, Arkansas. Extremely kind-hearted people who not only support the community, but they also support the Corning Bobcat Athletics. Jeremy and Amanda Wiedemann. The Corning Sports Report would like to give a special shout out to State Representative Joe Jett for sponsoring our endeavor. Mr. Joe Jett has always been active in the community, whether it's supporting the town of Corning or supporting Bobcat Athletics. This is a political ad paid for by State Representative Mr. Joe Jett. Corning Sports Report would like to give a shout out to Watson Oil Company for their continued support of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Locally owned, locally operated. Kelly and Chad Watson would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Watson Oil Company, 406 Southeast 1st Street, Corning, Arkansas, 870-857-0006. Most of us are more comfortable doing important business with people we know and trust. You've been running into shelter insurance agent Kirk Scobie in Corning at church, at the grocery store, and the county fair for more than 25 years now. If personal service, trust, and easy access to your insurance agent are important to you, Give Kirk Scobie or his team a call. Contact Kirk Scobie and ask about a free personal protection review for your auto, home, or life insurance today. From all the guys here at CSR, we'd like to give a special thanks to Mike Townsend. Mike Townsend is the owner and operator of Mike Townsend Farms LLC out of Corning, Arkansas. Whether it's grain, lime, hay, byproducts, gravel and litter, Mike Townsend Farms covers it all. Again, thank you to Mike Townsend Farms LLC. Corning Sports Report would like to give a shout out to Rockwell Farms out of Peach Orchard, Arkansas. Logan and Karen Rockwell have been avid supporters of not only the city of Corning, but of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Logan and Karen would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Rockwell Farms. CSR would like to give a special shout out to Heritage Ag out of Hoxie, Arkansas. Serving Arkansas farmers since 1966, leading the farm equipment industry into the 21st century. Call Brody Morrow, salesman at 870-886-6663 or 870-809-1822, Heritage Agriculture of Arkansas. When you need to find a farm at a price that's right, that red and blue sign is just within sight. Roll in, roll in to Conquest and roll on. Midwest Auto Parts, longtime proud supporters of the Corning Bobcats. Locally owned by the George family and serving your community since 1946. Midwest Auto Parts. Roll in, roll in to Conquest and roll on. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Corning Sports Report. We're live here at 
Hoxie, Arkansas for the matchup between the Hoxie Mustangs and the Corning Bobcats. The score, 48 to nothing. We still have just over two minutes left in halftime. Uh, it is a brisk, cold day, cold autumn day here in Hoxie, Arkansas. I don't even have the exact temperature, but it's got to be dipping below 50s. We've seen what a 30-degree Fahrenheit drop in the, in the day. Welcome to Midwest United States, everybody. Well, it's not been a real impressive showing for the Corning defense. I'm not quite sure on this. Hoxie Mind has scored on every single possession. Haven't been able to, you know, get pin our ears back like we talked earlier and keep Hoxie in short down situations, but Corning has been definitely given some good effort. With a 48-point deficit, I'm not going to ever count us out, but, man, that's a huge hole to climb out of. But i tell you what I would be satisfied with. As a fan, as a fan of the Corning Bobcats, I would be extremely satisfied if we turn this Hoxie win-win into a Hoxie win-loss. As If we make something manageable out of this ball game, we start to see some big plays from our, uh, our playmakers, our Clay Smith, uh, Riley Grubb, Jake Gutierrez, have somebody make some big plays, get some defensive turnovers. And I might be joined by Ricky here with me. If everybody yes, remembers Ricky from the Harrisburg game, the, the home game against Harrisburg, he was the color commentary for Andy Earls. Something like that. Something like that. Hey, we got a couple score updates. I just wanted to jump in real quick and let you know. We got Osceola 47 and Manila 0. 47 0. Mm -hmm. And Newport with 14 and Harrisburg with 13. Ooh, Half that's time. a big time matchup there. Very Which close. Harrisburg is a is a young up up and coming team. It's it's good to see them compete with somebody of the likes of Newport, somebody that's, you know, had a lot of success here recently. Yeah, for sure. Um, any other uh, score updates? Do what? Do no, that's it at the moment. And that's it at the moment for the score updates. But, hey, that's a, it's a lot to talk about, especially that Walnut Ridge or uh, Harrisburg and Newport game. Who saw that coming? <laughs> especially with how Newport played against this Hoxie team last week. Uh, I think we mentioned it in the pregame. Hoxie uh, had two or three turnovers in Newport territory last week. They ended up losing – by, I think, 24, so that's pretty much the ball game for the Hoxie Mustangs. If they don't turn the ball over three times in Newport territory, that looks like a different ball game. Uh, hopefully Harrisburg can kind of hold it out and keep that a ball game in the second half. Just kind of like what we're hoping to do here in Hoxie, see if Corning can, can have a spark to ignite the flame to get these guys to you know keep their heads up and make some plays out here. Hoxie's been... A beast on the ground, number seven. We've said his name all day long. Sh um, Shun Derek Powell. The guy runs a 4 5 40, and he has absolutely shown it tonight. He has been somebody who the Bobcat defenders just can't catch. He gets so much separation so quickly. Looks like both teams are now on the field. We got the camera showing the Bobcat warm up here. Hoxie's been out here for a few minutes warming up. It it would take me more than a few minutes to warm up on a cold day like today. Let's see what's going on on the Facebook live. Eric Arnold says, go Bobcats and go Hogs tomorrow night. I'm going to be making that long trek to Lexington tomorrow morning to watch the Razorbacks tomorrow night. I'm going to have to add extra layers. It's supposed to be another cold one out there. But I'll definitely be cheering them on. Eric Arnold says, question, how do schools like Harrisburg and Hoxie afford to build a field like that and are in the same conference as Corning? Ah, I have no idea. That would be a question for some of the bigger bigger dogs, the bigger fish in the pond than me. Andy might have a good uh, insight onto that. That guy's always got his hands everywhere.
We've got about 40 seconds until we get some action hey, here in the second half. And I'm going to have you test it before you go down there. Andy is going to be down on the field to give us some play-by-play -play down there. So I'm going to let the mic go silent until he is ready to go. And we are live back here at uh, Hoxie High School on the campus of Hoxie High School, I should say. Uh, the second half is about to start between the Corning Bobcats and the Hoxie Mustangs. Hoxie has absolutely dominated the first half. Extremely talented team. I mean, athletes all over the field, especially at the skill positions. And uh, they got a ton of weight out there, too. 19 guys over 200 pounds. Again, it's 48 to nothing. We're about to start the second half. We're going to do something a little different. We're going to start it from down here. You're going to start it with me here, guys as the Hoxie Mustangs will be kicking off right here to our Corning Bobcats. Back deep to receive is going to be Nakota Amaker on the far side and Bo Young on the near side. As Hoxie decides to kick it off here from the near hash, or far hash, I should say. End over end kick. Amaker bounces off of his chest there, picks it up off the ground. He's got some room. That's a speedster. Amaker, the ball is on the ground as the Bobcats get on it. It's going to be awful close. It's like Parker Davis might have gotten on it there. What does the referee say? Hoxie comes up with a football. It is Hoxie's football there. A turnover, obviously, on the opening kickoff of the second half. That's tough. That's really tough. We want to thank the crowd here tonight for being here. A fantastic uh, job by them. It's a really, really cold night. Uh, a good probably 45-minute drive from Corning uh, as well. So fantastic job by the Corning Bobcat crowd. Great job by the cheerleaders here as well. Uh, it's cold out here. They're out here with us, and uh, they're doing the best they can to keep it going. And we got a, we got a football. Here we go. Let's get this thing going, guys. Y'all ready? Are we ready? Here we go, ready? I'm gonna punt it. Oh, what was that? Can we cut that? Can we cut that out, Colton? Hang on, let's try it again. I'm blaming the cold weather for that one, folks. Laces out, Andy, laces out. Keep it going. We're gonna get this thing going here. Again, the second half here at Bob, or, sorry, Hoxie High School. And there we go. We're trying to keep it up, guys. Didn't do a very good job there. Kind of failed, kind of like uh, our Bobcats, unfortunately. Now, 10.42 to go here in the third quarter. Hoxie taking over here. And second down looks like about nine to go for Hoxie. If you can see it from down here, field level, these guys are big. 19 guys over 200 pounds. That's something you can't teach. There's another thing that you can't teach, and that is speed. Watch this right here. They're so shifty inside there, it's just it's tough. Good job there by the interior defensive lineman. Also, Clayton Crosby and Dylan Lane getting in there as well. Guys, it's a little different from down here, obviously. Field level view, we wanted to give you something a little bit different. Again, next week's going to be homecoming. Tune in. We're going to have a dance-off battle. We're going to have fireworks thanks to Renee Wilkins as well uh, next week, next Friday night. And we'll come to you live, obviously, there uh, at home at Bobcat Stadium versus Warner Ridge. I'm going to send it back to my buddy up there, Jared Grady. Can you take it for me, bud? Yeah, I'll take it. They don't want me doing the play-by-play, -play, but I will give it a shot. Hoxie has the ball. We have them into an uncommon third down, but it's a third down and short, third down and three as they set up into the shotgun. Hand off to number three. He's got plenty of room. He's already into the secondary. He's going to be possibly chased down. Just missed him. And that's another Hoxie touchdown as he was able to outrun just about everybody almost untouched as he shifted his way through past the line, past the linebackers, and past the Corning secondary. 
That brings our score to 54 to nothing as we wait the PAT for Hoxie. I don't know about you guys, but whenever Andy was punting that ball around, I, I feel like we needed a sound bite from uh, one of the TV shows. Just a wah, 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 wah. Hoxie's got it lined up. There's the snap. Oh, it's a it's a bad snap. He can't handle it. He's dancing around. He's caught all day, and he throws it away. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter any bit throwing that ball away. He could have just ran the ball out of bounds. It would have been the same difference. But after that busted play, scores 54-0. Hoxie will be kicking off to Corning coming up pretty soon. Hopefully this next offensive possession can be a little more lucrative for this Corning offense as Andy comes back beside me. Thank the Lord because <laughs> he certainly does this play-by-play -play stuff and makes stuff up way better than I do. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I just uh, I tell you, I'm just so blessed, number one, that we've got so many viewers tonight, number one. Number two, I've got great workers here beside me. And I tell you what, it flows really well when you're here beside me. Guys, second half here in Lawrence County, Hoxie to be exact. 7.50 in going. The clock is running 54 to nothing. Here's our second half trivia question, okay? All right, again, Debbie Rose Hill 60-minute massage is on the line and a $50 gift voucher from Parkview Restaurant, thanks to Amy and Danny Jordan as well. And the second question or trivia question, we should say, is what is the first year that Corning and Piggott played football? Again, what is the first year that Corning and Piggott first played football Give us your correct answer, one guess per Facebook page and YouTube channel. So I'm going to hop over on YouTube so I can yes. keep track of them. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Kickoff, end over end, and I tell you, Amaker, not it's not Amaker, actually it's Dylan Lane. I'd say he caught it this time, but that's Dylan Lane, brought down immediately by number one, Ethan Blocker. Ethan Blocker's had a couple of good years now against Corning. Again, last year he had 124 yards receiving for three touchdowns. And what do we have here on the social media hotline? Andy, do you have any idea where the dance-off is going to be held next Friday? I do. I'm assuming we're going to do it on the track there, uh, kind of in the waning moments of the second half. I don't want to interfere with the band or anything the cheerleaders are doing or, or the, the flag folks. Uh, I want them to have their time to shine, and then we're going to, we're going to battle it off, baby. Arkmo12 says the dance-off should be held at midfield. Big Ooh. smiley face. I wonder if we can do that or not. I don't know if the, the AAA has any problems with that or, or if, the, if the, anybody, maybe the coaches or superintendent Corning has any problems. But if we can do that, that's where we'll have it at. Yeah, I had a couple friends who always said, always ask, always beg for uh, forgiveness, not yes. for permission. There you go. It's easier to beg for per, uh, forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. So as our table's about to fall here, we had a, a very Arkansas ingenuity type of setup as far as keeping it up. That's Colton Lady on the brains of that, by the way. And Eric Arnold says 1950 maybe. I tell you what, boom, we've already got a winner. That did not take long at all. Nathan Cochran came through big time in a hurry like a bottle rocket. Woo. I mean, just exploded quick. It's going to be third down here with 545 to go in the third quarter. That didn't take long at all. Nathan Cochran, you are the winner of a 60-minute session at Debbie Rose Hill Smith's Massage Center and also a $50 uh, gift voucher. I keep saying gift card. It's a gift voucher from Parkview Restaurant. Fantastic job. First half, Leah Kilbreth. Second half, Nathan Cochran. Fantastic. I love it. Absolutely love it. Did we ever figure out which Ninja Turtle Bart White is? We need to figure that out right now. Clay Smith, handoff up the middle. Oh, we got some room. Gutierrez, he broke the tackle. He's got nothing but Greenfield in front of him. He's at the 25, the 20, the 15, and he's going to be almost brought down. He is. He tripped him up. A touchdown saving tackle. Fantastic job by number two in white. Love it. Holy hay bales, what a run. That's what we needed right there. A little bit of, not lightning, but thunder. some thunder. Love it. Boom. Boom. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I think his feet got a little heavy there at the end, though. Man, I wish he would have been able to get in. Let's punch it in right here. Let's Absolutely. I love, again, the fight of the Bobcats. They never give up, and you've seen it week in and week out. We don't even have to tell you anymore. It's actually redundant. Handoff there, Gutierrez. He's trying to find a hole, but, boy, he didn't have much of anything there. Can't blame the kid there. You had guys crashing from the ends. Hoxie, they kind of pinned their ears back and went at it. Again, we, uh, you know, we talked about some things being keys to the game, and one for the defense was to limit big plays. We haven't quite done that. And, and number two was to get the run game going early 
and we had a little bit of success there in the first quarter, but we haven't seen much of it until just then. Alan Pierce, you guessed 1928. That was close, but like uh, Andy said, that uh, Nathan Cochran said 1926. By the way, there were two games that year played between Corning and Pickett. Corning won the first one 51 to zilch. Ooh. Not a goose egg. Clay Smith bouncing around. He's in there. Touchdown! C-Town put six on the board for the Bobcats of Corning on the block and gold strike with 3.45 to go here in the third quarter. Fantastic job by Clay Smith. He just kind of slithered his way in there, found the gaps, found the holes, seemed to crack of the seam, and he hit it. You know, we haven't really ran that much this week. A little Clay, Clay Smith keeper. I agree, and that's another thing we talked about earlier. You know, I think we saw one of those earlier in the first half, and I'm happy to see that there. That's your senior, that's your captain. He wants to get in this game. You know he does. He's been throwing it a lot, obviously, but he wants to get in there, and he wants to get hit. He wants to get. He wants to dish out some hits, too. Going for two here are the Bobcats out of the shotgun formation like we've seen all night. They're looking to pass. Quick pass. Cross. He caught it. Is he in? No, they're saying incomplete. They're saying he didn't get it. I thought he caught the ball at least. Oh, yeah, that was definitely a catch. I think he's just signaling that, you know, they well, didn't cross that, that plane. Yeah, and here's the deal. It's where the, it's where the ball's at. And I don't know if it's probably you like to replay that, but it's where the ball's at. So, you know, it, it's not where his feet are. It's where the ball's at. So, that's probably true where he caught that. Good job catching that in traffic, though. Well, Andy, I'm going to take a stroll down memory lane, buddy. Oh, I we, had I remember go. a good double overtime game back whenever we played Ooh, football together. On this field right here. On this field right here. It wasn't turf back then, I don't believe. No, but, no, sir. No, sir. But I remember to win that ball game, you had a couple Hoxie players grabbing a hold of that jersey, and you drug them, and you were not going to get in until you did an NFL-style play where you took that football and you reached across the plane with the football, got us the six points, got us the win right there. It was a good pass by Eric. First of all, Eric Storms, our junior high quarterback, then he, he got some air under it, gave him an opportunity to come back and get it. Never forget that night. It was rainy, sleety, horrible conditions for football, kind of chilly, probably chillier than it was tonight. But football, guys, if you're not playing it, you need to get out and play it because it'll, it'll give you memories that will last forever. I'll never, ever, ever forget that. I know Coach Walls, if he's listening and watching, he got onto me that we can practice. Uh, every time I'd go down and get tackled, I'd reach out for an extra yard. I don't know where I've seen that or, or, or I have no idea. But either way, and uh, he yelled at me for that. I kept uh, I kept fumbling there as I was reaching out for extra yardage. And I'll never forget, he was the first one to come, come give me a hug. He said, I'm so glad you don't listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, Coach Walls. And Rocky Flores onside kick attempt here. Good. Oh, it's going to bounce off a Hoxie defender. We got it. The Bobcats have it. Holy hay bales on a play there. Great job. Was that Parker Davis? He's always in the right place at the right time. I was just about to say, man, I really liked how he did that onside kick. He put yes. a little bit of oomph behind it, made that hard to catch. You know, the, it's like a knuckleball in baseball. Yes. You can't really judge that thing whenever it's a worm burning across the turf. No kidding, man. I'll tell you what, that is an art form. It's like a slap button softball. It's just it's an art form. It's not easy. If, if you think it is, go try it. Yeah. Go try it. Bobcats take over. Good field position and momentum at the Hoxie 46. One minute to go here in the third quarter, 54-6 Hoxie. Quarterback keeper Smith behind that big offensive line. He's going to be brought down there by number 35. at Sam Turner. His dad's the assistant coach on the team, and, and dad will be happy there. Andy, uh, you mentioned someone earlier. It made me take another stroll down memory lane. You mentioned Randy Mack. Randy Mack. I remember him. He was Steph Curry before Steph Curry was ever popular. He'd take a couple steps across the half-point line, <laughs> shoot that thing, and oh, he was good man. at it too. I mean. I remember that too. That's why I laugh. Trey Davis watching Heather Price. Remember Matt Ryan to Mike, Mikey Carotlow at Hoxie as well. Uh, Trey Davis says Washington won cards nothing, top of the fifth. That's no good. That's my Rocky. Yes, ma'am, it is. He did a fantastic job there, Dana. Mark Arnott's watching Clayton Kent, Matt Wright. Uh, guys, it's going to be third down in about three here. 13 seconds to go remaining in the third quarter here at Hoxie. That's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Wow, I've got an opportunity. I'm a little bit behind on my on-air mentions here. Jay's Photography out of Corning, Arkansas. Jay Malone's the owner and operator. Fantastic, very talented man. Uh, very talented man. Jay's Photography isn't just photos, guys. They are versatile with graphic designs, business cards, vinyl lettering, and they even create videos. If you haven't seen the hype video that uh, Jay helped us with, you got to check it out, guys. Jay Malone, you can reach him at 870-323-0929. That's Jay's Photography out of Corning, Arkansas, local. Shop local, 870-323-0929. Also, Harvest Festival at Wynn Park in Corning, Arkansas is right around the corner. Saturday, October 26th, starting at 9 a.m. They're going to kick it off with a 5K run. Antique machinery, kids area, tons of food options. Kids area, let me mention that one more time. Kids area, mention it one more time. Kids area, mention it one more time. Live entertainment, arts and crafts, commercial exhibits, antique cars, which, by the way, our buddy over here, Justin Jones, him and his dad run that show. They're 
Gosh, I think they had 200 over a few years ago. That's unbelievable for a town of our size. And even more, contact Rhonda Salas, 870-926-1188. Rhonda Salas, 870-926-1188. Harvest Festival, Wind Park, Saturday, October 26th. If you're wanting to enter a car in the car show, that number for that is going to be 870-450-2308, 870-450-2308. That's Justin Jones, our CSR staffer, and we sure do appreciate him. Hand off up the middle there, not getting anywhere. In fact, I think he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure there. Andy, uh, love the Harvest Festival, man. Oh, Absolutely awesome. do. But it's a deal breaker for me. Do they have a kids' play area? Actually, I think they're going to have something like that. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> right. I, th- I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, it just so happens, I don't know if you heard that mentioned or not, the, the last seven times I mentioned it, but we'll mention it one more time. They're going to have a kids' area. Get a hold of Ronda Silas or Justin Jones for the car show. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Fourth down. Let's see what the Bobcats decide to do here out of shotgun formation like they've been all night. Four wide. Low snap. It's handled. Crosby catches it. Oh, makes a move. Good move. Another move. He's chopping them feet. He's trying. Bless his heart. I don't think he's got enough. I think it's going to be a turnover on downs there with 11.15 to go and a running clock here in the fourth quarter. Hey, Growing Corning Together is going to host a movie night in the park October 19th and October 26th. Two movie nights, Beetlejuice and Hocus Pocus are the two movies there. There's going to be some vendors there, I do believe. There's going to be some food as well. Bring you a blankie, a blanket. This is getting a little chitty. Bring you a blankie. Bring you lawn chairs, whatever you need, guys. Again, Growing Corn Together, hosting Movie Night in the Park at Wind Park, October 19, 26, Beetlejuice, Hocus Pocus. Hey, guys, and give our uh, other page, our little extension company, Redline Media Alliance, Facebook page. Give them a like as well. we got some big-time stuff coming up there in the next month or two here. We're about to get to get a brew in on that there. So Redline Media Alliance on Facebook. Check them out. Quarterback read. They give it up to the halfback, and he's going to be brought down. Couldn't tell who got there first. I seen Dylan Lane come in late. And it looks like Rocky Flores, Clay Smith, and it looks like number 60 there, and that's going to be Fisher Francis. Good job there by those guys. Also, real quick, second down to seven or six here. Dodgeball tournament in Corning, Arkansas, November 2nd. It's co-ed teams, grades 9 through 12 division and adult division. $50 entry fee to get in. Jackie Eddington's who you get a hold of there. Dodgeball tournament, November 2nd, 870-323-1912. Jackie Eddington, 870-323-1912. Dodgeball. November 2nd. And, folks, don't forget, if you can dodge a wrench, you you can dodge a ball. You can dodge a ball. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Getting some of those in and getting them out of the way here as quick as we can here. Focus on the action here. And I tell you what, good job by the Hoxie defender and the the Hoxie running back and the Bobcat defender just held on there for dear life, and that was Dalton Reed. Fantastic job, son. You know, he's getting some playing time here. Hasn't seen a whole lot this year, and he got in there and made him a tackle. Some showing some scrappiness there. I love it. I no too. quitting these guys. That's you know I, I alluded to that before you got back up here, Andy. Is I, I wanted to see this game, and I'm not giving up on this game. I think Corning miracles happen every day. Sure, but I want to turn this Hoxie win win into a Hoxie win loss. Let's let's win this second half. Hey Amen. Absolutely. And that's how you got to look at it if you're a head coach. My goodness, look at the guys in the backfield there. Someone came up and just lit him up. Who was that? That was number eight, Dylan Lane. That's another one of those holy hay bells, possible top ten nominations for the end of the year. We're going to do a top ten. You got the Sports Center, dun 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 dun. You got the CSR, holy hay bells, top ten plays of the year. We will uh, vote on those at the end of the year and have a video for you. You might uh, check that one there. Mark it. And we have Eric Arnold, and uh, he says, Andy Earls, let's get this track around the football field going. Hey, I'm all for that, buddy. Let's uh, let's figure out what needs to happen there. Brad Lewis is watching Cindy Woolard. Hey guys, what we got opportunity? Cal Bingo. Pride Booster Club is selling 100 tickets to Cal Bingo. $50 each. There's a chance of winning $2,500. The event's Friday, October 18th during the homecoming festivities. Get a hold of Jessica Russell, Chad Watson, James Varvel, Jim Clifton, or John Seelig. Cal Bingo tickets, $50 each, and you got a chance to win $2,500. Good job hanging on and wrapping up by the Bobcat defenders there. Let's get some numbers out. I see number seven, Lyndon Berry, in there. And I think Fisher Francis, and it looks like number 63 as well. That's going to be Hunter Swint. And I've seen 35 in there again, Mr. Dalton Reed. Second down and five for the Mustang. 7.58 to go here in the fourth quarter. Our winners tonight on the trivia, Leah Kilbreth and Nathan Cochran. Good job by them. Again, Friday's going to be homecoming. Thanks to Renee Wilkins, we're going to have some fireworks there against Walnut Ridge. It's Larry Treadway's old team. You know he's going to want to beat them. Uh, fireworks going to all go off pregame during every touchdown, and hopefully when we win next week, uh, we'll have some going off as well. And a dance battle between Growl and myself at halftime in the waiting moments of halftime. Quarterback Reed handoff up the middle, 
and that's number three. That's Davey Powell, the 4540 sophomore, or 40 speed sophomore, 5'7, 153. Rocky Flores in there, number 35, yet again in there, 60 Fisher Francis. And I've seen again number 63 Hunter Swin as well. Getting some of these subs some time in here and get them an opportunity to, to make some plays here. I like it. Again, you know, hey, Corning was a 30-point underdog coming here. You knew Hoxie had some talent. You knew they had uh, you knew they had speed all over the field, especially at the skilled positions. You knew it was going to be tough. And I tell you what, they've come out to play on homecoming. First down and 10 for Hoxie, 6.50 to go here. Five-second play clock, three-second play clock. Quarterback keeper this time. He fools them, and he's got some room, and he's got some blockers. And he's going to be brought down finally, well, I think, by Riley Grubb. And then it looks like number 35 uh, on the ground there. Got him by the feet. And, again, that's going to be Dalton Reed. Again, guys, listen, we need 1,000 subscribers. I think it's the red button, kind of like your red lid for whole milk. Red button on YouTube. Search Corning Sports Report. We need 1,000 subscribers, guys. If we can get 1,000 before basketball season, I, Andy Earls, will ride a bull. My better half does not know this yet, so it's one of those things where, like we talked about earlier, it's a lot easier to beg for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. So that's okay. I'll deal with that. i got broad shoulders. I can handle that. Uh, it'll be a week of doing dishes and laundry, but I can, I can work on that. But, again, I will ride a live bull if we can get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Nine-second play clock here. Let's see if they get the playoff. Hey, don't forget to ring that sub notification bell, too. That's what's going to give you a notification on your phone that we're going live or whenever we post anything else, like a hype video or something like that. So if you don't ring that sub notification bell, then you won't get a notification every single time we release something uh, of note. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're very tech savvy. I'm not. Delay of game on Hoxie there. And uh, Eric Arnold says, Mikey Carotlo, amazing K interview, undefeated season. Uh, hey, memories, brother. Co Wooler's watching. We appreciate that. Brenda Young, that's my son, Jess McKinney. Andy and Jared, I better see you bright and early at the 5K. Hey, Jessica, i got to get bright and early to work. Uh, unfortunately, Saturdays are the busiest days for us, and I just I don't think I'll be able to get that off. I might be able to get there later on in the afternoon, though. Uh, Jared could probably run that 5K and probably do pretty good, so let's, let's put him in there. Just vol- I volunteered him. He'll, he'll do it. Shannon Casing sure is watching. Courtney Slayton's watching. Michael Willard, Cindy Willard, Brad Lewis. Did we ever forget what Ninja Turtle that Bart is? I said Raphael. I'm, I'm okay. sticking to it. I okay. think Raphael is the kind of turtle who gets you into some trouble, but then he also he does something to, to you know get you right back out of trouble. That, Make that, some that, kind of amazing that's, play. That's Bart White. We got Ralph Morrow also up there. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a proud grandfather of two new grandbabies. And good job by number 35, Dalton Reed, getting in there. Listen to this. Samuel Latz is picking his trailing Walnut Ridge 20-6 to six with 6.58 to go in the third quarter. Denlene Woods is watching. Douglas King, Haley Arnold. Do we have a update on the Cardinals game by chance? Lindsey Vachet-Kett, Greg Mock is also watching. Thank you, Greg Mock, for helping us out with all that you do as well, tech-wise over there at Bobcat Stadium. I also want to mention something, too. Maybe this isn't something that you should mention on air. I don't know, but I really don't care. Here's the deal. We've got a guy that's on our staff that has had a, a tough history. He's had a tough past, and he's trying to do better, and, and I applaud him for that. There's a guy on our staff named David White. You may know him. He's had some issues with uh, – and he's okay with me mentioning this. He's had some issues with drugs in the past, and this guy has been drug-free since March. Um, since he started our little – CSR Corporation here. He's on our staff. He has not smoked a cigarette, which he's very, very happy about. I know that's small victories, but listen, with his past, that's a big deal, okay? If you see David White, listen, he always tries to help out in the community now. He's with us at Growing Corning together as well. Um, You know, listen, we all have our demons we face. Listen, I know I've got them. Uh, We all do. Nobody's perfect. He's trying to fight his, and he's trying to do it the right way. He volunteers with us all the time. And, David, if you're watching, we appreciate you, and we're proud of you. No matter how small it may seem to some, uh, that is a big deal, I know, and you're awful proud of it. So keep it up, my man. Just got home, Judy Miller says. Go Cats. Bruce and Brendan Goose says one nothing Nationals. That's no good. It's no good. Miles Michaels must be pitching a pretty good game, though. And there's going to be the keeper up to the side. He trips. Looks like uh, Riley Grubb may have tripped him there. <laughs> However you can get him down. Hey, there's no style points. <laughs> Absolutely not. Andy, I love that story about David. I think it's awesome, man. I, I, listen, I know that's probably not the most professional thing to be talking about on air, but I, I really don't care because I, I wanted to mention it. Hey, you know what? Kudos to him. I I want to give him a hug next yeah. time I see him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 2.54 to go here. Obviously, it's uh, you know it's kind of a foregone conclusion here with a 54-6 to six score. Listen, give Hoxie all kinds of credit. They came out, and they just kind of hit us right in the mouth right off. Here's the deal. When you can get to the edge the way they did and get ahead of steam with these guys that are running 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 
I mean, there's not there's nothing much you can do. Uh, well, not only that, they're intimidating intimidating to tackle whenever they're running at you that fast. But you know, yeah. one one credit for the Corning defense here. Yeah, they have given up the big play on the ground, but they haven't given up the big play through the air. Now maybe Hoxie hasn't had to go to the air very much, but in the moments that they have, yes. we've we've been able to stop that part of their playbook. Yes. So, yes. Hey, I also want to mention I was just told I don't know how true this is, so please don't uh, you know bank on it. But usually four teams in these conferences go to the playoffs. Someone just told me that actually this year's our time for the rotation. Five teams will go. This loss doesn't kick you out of that necessarily. There's still an opportunity for that, so keep the big picture in mind. And listen, I heard some Hoxie fans on the way up here today when we got to, got here talking about the, the streak that we snapped. It's behind us, but listen, those losing streaks aren't near as uncommon as people think, okay? I mean, even in the state of Arkansas, the last five years we've had two teams, Drew Central and Waldron. Uh, Drew Central out of Monticello and Waldron have lost 42 games straight within the past five years, it, it happens, it, especially across the country. Matter of fact, there's a team in Texas that just snapped one, I think, in 2018, an 88-game losing streak. There's teams that had a 100-game losing streak. So it's still out there. Listen, this team has done a fantastic job. These kids came out, we had 35 guys, at 38 when we started, 35 guys on this roster. For them to come back after losing 42 straight, that says a lot about their character, who they are. The fans have gotten behind them. I love it, and I'm, I don't know, I just kind of got sick and tired. And when I heard that on the way over here, like, you got to be kidding me. we got two games under our belt. These kids have came out in big numbers. You know, I know there's no moral victories, obviously, but, man, I think they've done pretty darn good. They bucked some trends already this year, and, and I, I think it's awesome. I think they've done fantastic. I don't care what the scoreboard says tonight. Absolutely. And this coaching staff, man, they're holding these kids accountable. It, you know, they're telling them whenever they're not doing things right, you know, yeah. and they're not just trying to sugarcoat their, their good – of like uh, how well they're doing something. They want these kids to, to always do better. I think that this coaching staff has done a great job of just keeping these kids focused on the next play, the next yeah. game. Yeah. And uh, that's how you end those streaks is just, like you said earlier, talking about little bitty victories. Yes. You get one victory that leads to another victory and another, and then it stockpiles. It's that snowball effect. Once that snowball, gravity gets a hold of it, it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. You've, and, got, to, uh, you've got to change the culture. And listen, what does that mean, though? It can mean a lot of things. It can mean you come in here and you change the, the demeanor of everybody. You change the atmosphere of everybody. It may not mean you reflect on, on wins or whatever it may be. It may be something totally different. But they have gotten wins this year as the fireworks are going off here at homecoming for Hoxie. But I think that is fantastic what they have done, this coaching staff, with this team, this program. And who knows, this is paving the road for future stuff down the road. I'm telling you, if this team is winning three and four and five games next year or whatever it may be, it's because these guys right here have done it the right way, the classy way, and they've worked their butts off and been good examples. And I love that. We've got Chad Jordan watching. Coach, we love you, brother. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, undefeated football season, by the way. I love you, Coach. Yes, yes, love it, love it. Who else is tuning in here? Bruce and Brendan McGrew. Hey, David is a great guy. Yes, he is, and he's really trying. And Again, I, he was okay with us talking about that. It was the most professional thing, but uh, thank you, guys. We appreciate y'all's help. That's some of our staffers there. Uh, Tim Earls, Old Man River, Ricky Betts are leaving. We appreciate them. Uh, Bruce and Brendan McGrew, again, they said that. Teresa Shroud is watching. Lori Mock, uh, much love for David. Thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, Judy Miller says he's great. Pam and Bobby Lower watching. Appreciate you guys. Erica Taylor. Uh, Teresa Shroud, Judy Miller, loving the Corning Bobcats. Jared, I, again, obviously score didn't reflect in our favor, but you came in here knowing that Hoxie's a pretty big uh, heavy favorite. They had a lot of speed, had a lot of size. This Hoxie team, if they don't turn the ball over like crazy in Newport's territory last week, who knows? They, they got the talent to play with the Newports and OCLs. They just hadn't had things bounce their way. They are talented enough to do that. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, – uh, programs, winning programs. Hoxie's obviously on the up and up. Sure. And in small towns, sometimes you have these ebbs and flows of, of a lot of talent coming in. You'll have a really strong senior yes. class and maybe a weaker sophomore class. Corning, I, I genuinely believe that this is a team that's on the up and up. This is a team on the rise. So you got to think that some of these conference opponents, coaches, got to be talking to their to their young players, saying, "Hey, listen." This team is not going to be a 54-6 to six win next year. Yes. You guys, you young guys need to keep an eye on this Bobcat team because yes. cause they're coming. I, I totally agree. that Those things happen. That, like you said, the ebb and flows and ups and downs. But, and, again, listen, we've got a good Pee Wee football program. It's kind of helping out with that. They're starting them off a little early. Obviously, at junior high, now you're getting these coaches with them in junior high. Starting off even earlier. I'm telling you, Coach Trudway, I think he's the real deal for this program. This program is a need. They already need a, a need of a, a change of culture, and that's what they're getting. Again, what does that mean, though? It doesn't necessarily mean how you win five games. It's not always in that win-loss column, okay? It's about building that foundation. 
changing the attitude, the narrative, flipping the script, if you will, and they've definitely changed it yeah. this year. We have went from, man, are we are we even going to compete in any games to are we going to at least win one game? They, they clicked that right off the bat. Then it was, are we going to win a conference game? Are we going to win a road conference game? We got that out of the way. Now it's, hey, there's five teams that get the playoffs. You get a win next week, you sneak up on them maybe. You know, obviously, also, oh, still Newport going to be heavy on the dogs, but you never know. You still got to come to play. And then you got pick at your rivalry game. Anything can happen there. Who knows? Maybe you sneak in there. And then that changed the whole narrative of the whole season, and no one's seen that coming. You beat me to the punch, man. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking, you know, this team isn't isn't out. They've got enough talent on that field that you get a couple wins here and there, and, and you said that five will get in? That's what they're telling me. It rotates, I think. I think normally four teams get in, but this year they're going to get five. Five head, five teams. I got a big one, sorry. Five teams <laughs> that are. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> I'm glad you aren't, yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, my sidekick there. Uh, hey, listen, again, next week, Renee Wilkins bought a ton of fireworks. We're going to have a fireworks show for homecoming. Get your tails in those seats. I just shook the camera. I didn't mean to do that. Coach Treadway's old team's coming into town. The Bobcats, battle of the Bobcats. Back in the day, it was a big time rivalry. They were pretty competitive, too. And Coach Campbell can tell you about that. It's looking the wall of Smith Boys. Growl and myself are going to have a dance off battle. Going to have fireworks. It's going to be hopefully really good weather. I like this weather. I got the shorts on. I don't know if you can see those hairy legs or not. Uh, the shorts on. I love this weather. Get your tails out there Friday night if you can. Okay, if you can, get out there. If you can't, kick off your shoes, relax, tune in with us. Uh, I know we're supposed to go to sponsors, but man, I, I don't know. I just I hate to I hate to give up right now. Karen Kenny Davis says I'm from Hoxie, but love the broadcast. Thank you guys. Hey Kenny, we appreciate that. Hey and share it. Maybe maybe some of these Hoxie kids. You guys got some athletes out there that some of these kids could be playing at the next level. Share this stuff for us if you can. Joyce Huck will be still watching. Mark Haney, Brandy Yellen, love these boys. Never give up. 77. Well, he sure did. And that was a heck of an onside kick, by the way. And that is not easy. Folks at home, just put the football on the tee if you got one and try to onside kick it. I'm going to give the YouTube uh, yeah. watchers a little bit of love here. Don Elaine, which I don't know if I'm supposed to do this because this might reveal Growl's identity. Isn't that supposed to be a sacred thing? I don't think it's one of those Batman type of thing where okay. it's Bruce Wayne. I mean, he doesn't go fight crime at night or anything like that, but I think it's okay. Don Elaine says, Growl's mom, good luck, Bobcats. He, he does a good job. I don't know how in the world I'm going to outdance the guy because I can't dance a lick in my life, but I've got a week to figure it out. Like I said, I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever <laughs> was. And I'm going to learn some moves this week from our CSR staffers. We're going to work out something. And we've got maybe something. I don't know if it's going to work out. We're going to do a little Patrick Swayze. Nobody puts baby in the corner type of dance routine. I don't know if it's going to work. We're going to try it. I can't promise it. we got some I ideas. I just did that. I don't know why I did that. Katie, Please tell me why I did that. Is that really the best you could do? Katie? Really? If you enjoyed it, give Andy. it a thumbs up. <laughs> I tell you what, Andy, if, if I were you, which you got to have the, I, I don't know, the uh, stamina or whatever keeps you warm of a squirrel in heat because Some I don't know how loco. you're out here in shorts and a T-shirt. But I love it. If the same weather were next Friday, I would be the only dance I'd be doing is the shiver. The shiver. I'm absolutely that? freezing right now. Yeah, I love it, though. I love the weather. Thank you to all the staffers. Justin Jones is one of them. Listen, we got to get our sponsors in, but please stick with us for a second, okay? I know it's late. I know it's uh, if you're out here, obviously, watching, it's cold, but hey, I don't care. Stick with us. Let's give these sponsors some love. We're going to bring it right back here to us, and we're going to end it. I don't know. We may end it with a dance. We may surprise you. Who knows? Stick with us. We'll be right back to these words from our sponsors. Harold's Barbecue out of Corning, Arkansas. Proud sponsors of the Corning Bobcats. The best barbecue in town by stoplight. Stop by and say hi to the crazy pit master, Lyndon Massey. Carry out, dine in, catering. Come hungry, leave happy. Harold's Barbecue. A big thanks to Goodman Drug Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Kathy Goodman and staff would like to invite you to drop by for any of your pharmaceutical needs and or Razorback and Bobcat apparel. Drop by and see them Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.30, and Saturday, 9 to 1, or use the convenient drive-thru. Goodman Drug Company out of Corning, Arkansas. Red Taylor Ford, locally owned and operated by the Taylor family since 1977. Their company has been an integral part of the Corning community since their beginning, participating and or donating to basically every major community project to come before them. They have a top-notch service department, with master certified technicians. Contact them for all of your automotive needs at 870-857-3516 or at www.redtailorford.com. This is Mike Vincent, certified public accountant. I've been a Bobcat fan for as long as I can remember, having worn the black and gold as a student years ago. Join me in supporting our students as they proudly represent our school and community. 
And come see me on 2nd Street in downtown Corning for all your tax and accounting needs. Go Bobcats! CSR want to thank Parkview Restaurant of Corning, Arkansas for their sponsorship. Parkview offers breakfast, lunch, and supper, including daily plate lunches. And they have a daily with a variety of lunch meats and nightly specials. Amy and Danny and Jordan are big supporters of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Thank you to Parkview Restaurant. A special thanks to Richardson Family Dentistry out of Corning, Arkansas. Locally owned, locally operated, a fine dental office with a great staff that are all proud sponsors of the Corning Bobcat Athletics Program. Richardson Family Dentistry. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance Company introducing Ag Promise, an exceptional policy that protects everything farmers rely on. Ag Promise is a competitively priced, easy to understand, and tailored to meet your specific needs. That's Farm Bureau's commitment to you, and they have a team of local agents and adjusters ready to back it up. Give them a call today to protect your agri business. It's not complicated, it's a promise. Ag Promise, 870-857-6788. Hey, all you Bobcats, this is Ty Price of Price Farms, and I want to challenge everyone to attend at least five football games this year. Let's show our boys that we believe in them. Remember, once a Bobcat, always a Bobcat. A special thanks to Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation on their sponsorship. Whether it's grain bins, wells, pumps, underground pipe, or any service of that nature, Solace Grain Bins and SNL Irrigation will take care of you. Rhonda and Jerry Solace would like to wish the Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. First Choice Healthcare in Corning, Arkansas, proud sponsors of Corning Bobcat Athletics, celebrating 25 years of community health care. At First Choice Healthcare, we practice compassionate, affordable health care for everyone to help improve lives and build healthier communities. First Choice Healthcare, your community, your health. CSR would like to give a special thanks to B&B Well Drilling out of Peach Orchard, Arkansas, for their continued support of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Brian and Lisa Bass are proud, proud graduates of Corning High School, and they invite you to call them for any of your well drilling needs. 870-215-3808, BNB Well Drilling. A big thanks to Clay County Electric Co-op out of Corning, Arkansas for their sponsorship. CCE is an electric utility company in Clay County with dedicated workers and a friendly staff and have always been proud supporters of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Clay County Electric Co-op, 3111 U.S. 67 Corning, Arkansas, 870-857-3521. A special thanks to Woolard Flying Service out of Corning, Arkansas for supporting Bobcat Athletics. Matt Woolard would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck this season and also remind them that the sky is the limit. Woolard Flying Service, 870-857-3839. A special thanks to Civil Engineering Associates for being proud sponsors of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Two locations, one in Jonesboro, one in Poplar Bluff. Professional engineer John Selig of CEA would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Keith and Rhonda Turner of K-Ron Farms would like to encourage the community to support the students of the Corning School District. Whether it is a sporting event or an academic accomplishment, these students are representing our school. We need to let them know how proud we are of them. Let's show our Bobcat pride. It's great to be a Bobcat. k -Ron Farms. Looking for a good and reliable used car? Stop by and see the father-son combination of Mark and Kyle Williams at Mark's Car ER Auto Sales. Proud sponsors of the Corning Bobcats, locally owned and operated, 870-565-5046. Wiedemann Farms, 561 County Road 131 in Corning, Arkansas. Wiedemann Farms has been serving the Corning community since 1978. Larry and Mary Wiedemann are proud, proud supporters of not only the city of Corning, but of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Wiedemann Farms, go Cats. The Corning Sports Report would like to give a special shout out to Bosch Licker Brothers Farms for sponsoring our endeavor. The Bosch Lickers have always been avid Bobcats and avid supporter of all things Corning Athletics. Thank you again, Bosch Licker Brothers Farms. First National Bank takes the banking experience and customizes it to fit you. Whether it's supporting your Corning Bobcats or saving you time by eliminating trips to the bank, First National Bank puts you first, always. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender, First National Bank. 
Corning Sports Report, I'd like to give a special shout out to Jeremy and Amanda Wiedemann out of Corning, Arkansas. Extremely kind-hearted people who not only support the community, but they also support the Corning Bobcat Athletics. Jeremy and Amanda Wiedemann. The Corning Sports Report, I'd like to give a special shout out to State Representative Joe Jett for sponsoring our endeavor. Mr. Joe Jett has always been active in the community, whether it's supporting the town of Corning or it's supporting Bobcat Athletics. This is a political ad paid for by State Representative Mr. Joe Jett. Corning Sports Report would like to give a shout out to Watson Oil Company for their continued support of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Locally owned, locally operated. Kelly and Chad Watson would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Watson Oil Company, 406 Southeast 1st Street, Corning, Arkansas, 870-857-0006. Most of us are more comfortable doing important business with people we know and trust. You've been running into shelter insurance agent Kirk Scobie in Corning at church, at the grocery store, and the county fair for more than 25 years now. If personal service, trust, and easy access to your insurance agent are important to you, give Kirk Scobie or his team a call. Contact Kirk Scobie and ask about a free personal protection review for your auto, home, or life insurance today. From all the guys here at CSR, we'd like to give a special thanks to Mike Townsend. Mike Townsend is the owner and operator of Mike Townsend Farms LLC out of Corning, Arkansas. Whether it's grain, lime, hay, byproducts, gravel and litter, Mike Townsend Farms covers it all. Again, thank you to Mike Townsend Farms LLC. Corning Sports Report would like to give a shout out to Rockwell Farms out of Peach Orchard, Arkansas. Logan and Karen Rockwell have been avid supporters of not only the city of Corning, but of Corning Bobcat Athletics. Logan and Karen would like to wish the Corning Bobcats the best of luck on the upcoming season. Rockwell Farms. CSR would like to give a special shout out to Heritage Ag out of Hoxie, Arkansas. Serving Arkansas farmers since 1966, leading the farm equipment industry into the 21st century. Call Brody Morrow, salesman at 870-886-6663 or 870-809-1822, Heritage Agriculture of Arkansas. When you need to find a part at a price that's right, that red and blue sign is just within sight. Roll in, roll in to Carquest and roll on. Midwest Auto Parts, longtime proud supporters of the Corning Bobcats. Locally owned by the George family and serving your community since 1946. Midwest Auto Parts. Roll in, roll in to Carquest and roll on. Welcome back to Lawrence County, Hoxie, Arkansas, on the campus of Hoxie High School. Your Bobcats did uh, fall tonight in the 3-3A conference game against the Mustangs, but good fight there at the end, like always. That's nothing to be surprised about. We're going to recap the biggest play of the night for the Bobcats. It was a long run by Jake Gutierrez. You boys ready? Let's huddle up. All right, guys, what was that play called? Gutierrez, just get us some yards on three. Ready? <laughs> yeah, One, two, three. Three. Right. There we go. I don't know what we're doing. Okay, we got a center up there. It was in a shotgun formation. The hand, the half back here to the side of Clay Smith. Down. So, uh, hey. That's exactly how it worked, right there, folks. Uh, great job tonight. Uh, there in the second half by the Bobcat offensive line. Also, the skill position players. I don't know what that was right there, but. LaDainian Tomlinson, he says. Guys, we appreciate you joining us tonight. Obviously, I know it was tough maybe to stick with us with a score. We hope we at least gave you a little bit of entertainment. Good job, Nathan Cochran, Leah Kilbreth on winning the trivia questions tonight. So, fantastic job there. This, this is a really good Oxy team. They're fired up from the very beginning. It's homecoming night for them. Um, they're still on the field out here. They're trying to soak it all in, and they should, obviously. Our Bobcats will be home next Friday against Walnut Ridge. Coach Larry Treadway's O team. We're going to crack Nut Hill next week, at least we're hoping so. Again, there's going to be a fifth uh, seed for playoffs, so we really need that game next week. So we need you fans. We need y'all's tails in those seats, okay, if you can do it for us. Myself and Growl will have a dance-off. I can't dance to save my life, but we're going to try it. And, they're, yeah, they're saying, no, I'm going to try it. We're going to give it a shot, have a little fun with it, if you will. Also, uh, the Dakota Wilkins family also donated quite a bit of money and fireworks for us for our next home game, and hopefully – Hopefully we'll use them up next week, but if we don't, we'll have them for the next home games as well, including the Rice Bowl. 
I hope we light that place up for that one. So we may be able to donate some more fireworks, get some more families involved or more businesses in town. So for myself, Andy Earls, Colton Ladyman up there, the captain of our ship, uh, he did a great job tonight. We had uh, some hurdles when we got here, fantastic job. Gage Arnold was here, Carson Bowser was here, Tim Earls was here, uh, Ricky Betts was here. Uh, we had quite a few of them there. Again, Justin Jones, Jay Square here to my side, and uh, Jared Grady there. Uh, the better half on the commentator system there. We appreciate you, brother. Again, for everybody here at CSR, good night to you. We're going to end it in a dance, maybe like a little river dance, no? No, nothing? Okay. Guys, good night. We'll see you next week. Go Cats.